All right, welcome back to the Smokescreen Podcast, episode 59, and we're back with Convicting a Murderer. Yes. As we continue the conversation, it's been going pretty crazy online, a lot of comments. Um, two special guests lined up today originally, but we did have one had to cancel at the last minute. We had Sean Rick, the director of Convicting a Murderer. I'm trying to say this right. You're doing great. So far. <laughs> and then we also have... Brenda Schuler, who, of course, is the producer of Convicting a Murder that you see throughout the series. She is widely known as, I believe, a case expert. Savant. So, so, yeah, Savant, there you go. That might work, too. Because a lot of the things I see in, in conversations online, comments, and whatever, is just read the case files, read the case files. And we have read a lot of the case files. But here's somebody who has read every damn thing in the case for years and years and years, widely known case expert. So... Brenda Schuler will be joining us. Um, we just got done recording it, and I will say really quick on, an, on just a little technical note <laughs> that yeah. the entire time that we were talking to Brenda, my mic was not plugged in. I'll be the first to admit it. I was just going to say audio technical difficulties, but it just wasn't plugged in. So um, J James will sound really good. Brenda will sound really good. Uh, I'll sound like a little bit of an echo chamber, but it's not horrible. It's not unwatchable. But uh, anyway, but that's uh, that <laughs> Jesus Christ, because <laughs> we are professional podcasters here. And uh, speaking of professional podcasters, what I think today's sponsor, Avery's Auto Salvage. If you need a tow, <laughs> T O E or T O W, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, Jesus. Anyway, no, really, uh, thank you to Brenda Schuler for joining us. It was really, really a good podcast, so really, fun. really open to all this conversation. We played devil's advocate a lot as well about all this evidence. And again, thank you to Sean. I uh, hope he's doing okay. Um, but he had to cancel again at the last like an hour and a half before we started. Yeah. So uh, maybe, maybe we'll have him on yeah. after this thing wraps up. It'd be really cool. Absolutely. So uh, let's jump right in and talk to Brenda Schuler about convicting a murderer. I want you to put your hands together. And welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause. It goes to the neighborhood. Well, we have Stephen Avery, so yay. That's right. So, are you from up? You're from Wisconsin. That's I am. Wisconsin. Okay. Oh wow. Well. That's kind of how I got involved, and in it really was. I was an, you know, advocate as far as uh, him being guilty from back in 2005, six, seven, but I didn't really know the case until I watched Making a Murder. And I remember looking right. at my husband and saying, everything I heard, I'm confused. Okay. You know, I, right. So I looked into it and fortunately I got in with a, a group of people that really had access to some information and I probably converted to back to, you know, believing in his um, guilt. Honestly, I've never hidden the fact that I'm a guilter, right, uh, right. but it probably switched back pretty quick on that because I got into with a, a certain group of people that just were kind of looking for more information and were getting paid. They had like Brennan Dassey's trial right off the bat from Pacer. And so I think it really matters on what group you end up with too. Yeah. Yeah. We, I found it really odd since we've done these last couple of podcasts that um, the, the groups, the arbitrary boxes we're thrown into now it's there's, there's, there's no nuance to anything. I find that really odd. Um, but I'm not surprised these days. I was just curious. Um, I've seen a couple other screeners do some shows and mention that they've never seen anything like this. And that kind of resonated with me because I wasn't ever in the true crime world. It never interested me. I don't know why I was drawn well, into it. Well, let me check. Let me mark off this first question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, kind of here. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Let me just quickly, Brenda, thank you for taking the time. Brenda Schiller, everybody, um, from uh, obviously Convicting a Murder, the producer. And if you've seen this you know, series, you've seen her throughout the series as well. Um, you know, case, case expert, you probably have every document there is, right? I'm, sure, I'm assuming because anytime we, we post an opinion that's contrary to making a murder, it's just read the case file, read the case file. Well, we oh. have somebody here uh -huh. who's read the entire case file. So, Brenda, thank you for being here and uh, taking some time out of your weekend. Um, really quick, though, I want to mention, we were supposed to have Sean Rick, the director. Yeah. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the, literally an hour and a half ago, something like that, um, that got canceled at the last minute. But I uh, really appreciate you taking the time out, especially on a Saturday night. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> appreciate a, it. a small podcast. It's just interesting. It's, uh, 
this insanely um, complex case. It, very complex. And, and thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, as you probably know, I love to talk about this case and my family is really pretty much sick of hearing about it. Right. <laughs> I'll bet. I have an opportunity to talk to people who actually want to hear me. So, right. Well, you know, that's, that's why I made such a funny thing about marking off that first question is I was going to ask you if you were a true crime nut, cause I am. And I have watched probably when I, when I lived with Chris, uh, Chris and I go way back right. and, uh, and then I went through a divorce after like 20 years and uh, went, uh, stayed with Chris for a few years. And I would fall asleep every night watching forensic files. <laughs> and then I'd have nightmares and he'd have to come rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But I've probably seen every episode of forensic files so many times. If we had one on in the background, I would look at you and go, Oh yeah, they they smeared the blood on the wall to make them think it was this guy. And I, I really I really love true crime, and this case just fascinates me. So I'm tickled pink to have you here. Uh, I think I do think you're a celebrity because oh, yeah. you're all over convicting a murderer. Yeah, and that was kind of accidental too. I was never really supposed to be in it, and um, Sean asked me one day because you you know you have certain people that can talk about certain things you can right. uh, ken kratz a prosecutor could talk about the the trials um tom fosbender could talk about brendan and the investigation you know, somebody from the 85 case could talk about the 85 case but they didn't really have one person that could talk about all of it right. at any okay. given time so that's kind of where they dragged me into being on camera and of course you know i couldn't say no to something like that but that was never my intention to be on camera by any means right well you are now you're celebrity and you know twitter is going to blow up and i'm sure you're seeing all a lot of that uh, drama is uh, just just having that opinion i'm sure oh yes um, <laughs> you did great thank you FYI. Yeah, absolutely. yeah i, I would have guessed you'd been in a lot of things like that yeah thank you so just yep. go, just to piggyback off of that, so how did you get into uh, true crime and then you know meet up with Sean or whatever and get involved in the project at all? So you said you were just you knew that you you saw making a murder, but you yes. had believed he was guilty. And then what made you dig into it more and then eventually hook up with Sean to make this move? Yeah, like your hometown was it a ginormous thing uh, when the when the uh, case was going on because I, of who I, it was? I'm about an hour away from Manitowoc. Uh, so when the case in 2005 first came out, I was working in Green Bay and a lot of people knew the Hallbuck family. Right. So I was from the missing person case. I was kind of in the loop, but I still didn't really know anyone from the case, but I was still interested. And then when he was found guilty, you know, I didn't dig into it or anything, but I, I believe that he was guilty. And he, everybody talks about this framing and that didn't really come up back then. I, I don't ever remember like Colburn and Link's name ever coming up. So I think making murder, it was much more, uh, they, they focused on them a lot more than I remember at least back in 2005. So it was a big deal. It definitely was because he had just been exonerated. So right. my first thought when it happened was, wow, did he do the first case? You know, back in right. 2005, six, seven, but no, I, I, he totally didn't do the first case. So I, I figured that out pretty quickly after making a murder, but I just, I watched it. I was home like everyone else binge watched it and was during the holidays. I believe it was right. Right. <laughs> and I, it was so amazing because I knew the story a little bit and I thought I knew the story. And then when I talked to my husband about it, we both after every episode, the blood vial, that one, I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. What is with this? What is right. with that? And I, I did. I believed it. And I, I had never gotten into true crime. This is the only case I've really ever dug into. And I don't know what it is about making a murder that drew so many people in droves. Oh, to like yeah. uproot your life. You uproot your life over this show. To right. So anyway, I just dug into it, and how I got connected with Sean was a couple of years in the making. I actually um, helped one of the assistant uh, um, district attorneys who helped exonerate Stephen in 2003, Michael Griesbach, I helped him write a book. He wrote it, I just fact-checked it in 2016. And then I actually interviewed Andy Colburn for the book. So that's how I met Andy Colburn. And then when Andy Colburn, when the book was completed, 
Andy Colburn called me one night and asked if I wanted to meet Tom Fassbender, the lead detective. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. I want I want to my answers. I want to know more about this case. And Tom came and met me and ran a background check on me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I did, you know, jaded cop thing. So he had to make sure I was not some person just trying to get information or do right. anything bad. And but then he introduced me to Ken Kratz and I helped Ken Kratz write his book. And then Ken um, talked to Sean and another guy. And that's where I ended up um, kind of as a field producer, just helping schedule things. And then, like I mentioned, that I kind of just got involved more with knowing the whole case. I could answer questions right. all at once instead of, okay, we have to ask Tom that. We have to ask Ken that. Or we have to ask someone from the 85 case that. Because I'd read all the files, I could at least reference the files. So that's how I kind of ended up being part of it more and more as it went. Right. Well, okay. like you said before, they needed somebody on camera that could answer any particular aspect of this whole entire saga from 1985 onward. Right. 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 Got you. Got you. Um, is there a particular piece you said, you know, you watched Making a Murder, Letting in a True Crime? Was there something, and you said you thought he was guilty, but you said you had doubts with the blood vial. Was there something that made you think, wait a minute, what made you think he, he was guilty after watching that with no prior knowledge? Well, after watching it, the things that stood out to me were, of course, the blood vial, which, of course, was debunked right away. Right. So that was didn't nothing. Didn't that either. <laughs> right. So I didn't understand. Like, that was how it kind of started off for me, was I didn't understand why they were putting that stuff in there that meant nothing. So that was kind of my first, like, what's going on here? And then um, as I talked or communicated more with these people, two of the things that stuck out to me there were only two things that really stood out to me that kept me from believing Brendan was guilty, but Steve and I believe pretty early on he was guilty. I think the key was one of them. Mm -hmm. That was the one with Steven that I, made me kind of think, well, it's there and then it's not. But of course, right. making a murder left out the fact that there was a little slit in the back. And, and I kind of look at Occam's razor. If you're that dumb to plant a key like that after it's been searched, you're dumb enough to get caught <laughs> and right. they didn't and so that that always stuck out to me was the key was the big one for me and when I found out there was that back opening that kind of took care of it for me I could believe it could happen <clears throat> that. right I think right. that's what we said was you know they didn't show the full side of that thing right previously and then when they showed in convicting the murderer the full picture yeah we looked at each other like oh okay. All they would have to do is pan down. It's, it's uh -huh. very odd how it appeared and, you know, fell in a certain, you know, however they, but we don't know exactly how they moved it, but at least it's possible. Yeah, I think you said right. they made it appear magical and yeah. they almost did it defy physics yeah. and all this it, stuff, it, you yeah. know, but then you find out there's an inch gap at the bottom. Right. And you're like, oh my goodness. Well, yeah. I'll be honest with you, Brenda. Um, probably blow your mind, but I, I'm still like on the fence. I think I could be swayed either way. Okay. So maybe by the end of this podcast, you'll have a chance. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I was like everybody else. I, I hook line and sinker, I making a murderer. I wanted those guys to get a new trial at least if not free them. You know what I mean? All right. And, and, uh, I mean, you realize how crazy that is because Chris mm -hmm. and I, we always have to point out like, look, at the end of the day, it's not like the murder was made up. This poor girl, died you know right. so i feel so bad about that 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 gets lost a lot in this it does um but when you when you watch making a murderer you're left feeling like she wasn't the only victim here that they were as well and i want the real killers called right. well then unfortunately i really wish that um sean's docuseries could have came out before season two Right. Because season two really just revved it up again. I'm 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 really like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is how do all how do they keep getting denied every level they go up legally? Mm -hmm. You know, never stopping to think there's probably a lot of stuff I don't know that they know, you know. Yeah, I mean you're you get so emotionally invested in it. Everybody yeah. did. You I do. Mean, you got to talk about what a hundred million people saw this thing and yeah. it's you're getting this uh this you kind of dug in this trench and you and just um and like like James just said, Brenda, we're still, you know, I'm 
I'm more now Stevens guilty. Brendan had saw something maybe, but I don't think either was in the trailer and we'll get into that stuff as well. But, um, you know, I just, the mental gymnastics I see with the discussions to me is insane. Um, I, I'm on Twitter. I, I'm not like highly active uh, because I, you know, I've always put out my stuff for my channel and we do the podcast and, you know, we're promoting that and all that stuff. But I usually don't get bogged down in all the, the conversation, but this last couple of weeks I've been, you know, reading a lot more as we get back into this case. And it, it's unbelievable how, to, to, you know, people will think of, oh, this, how, this is how this could have happened. And then at the same time, if you think that he's potentially guilty, they're saying, just read the case files. Okay. Well, we have somebody who's read the case files. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the case file. Okay. Um, but before we get into details and that, um, just real quick, well, I was going to ask Sean this as well. What would you say to people who are into this case? They claim to be interested in this case that won't watch this because it's on Daily Wire or Candace yeah. Wilson's the host and she's controversial and right wing and whatever. Mm -hmm. I, we said in the first couple of podcasts, don't do yourself a disservice and not watch this because because of that, because of that alone. This is not political. But um, yeah, I mean, what would you say to people? Because, you know, this is not political. You guys made this Daily Wire acquired this Candace. Mm -hmm re-edited some yeah. stuff and kind of insert yourself as the host but it, it what would you say to people well i mean i i think you have said this before i mean i think people will refuse to give money to them no matter what yeah, sure and i i can't change their mind on that any better right. than what the two of you have said this is not a political documentary um it really is based upon looking at another film and giving the whole truth to that film because a lot of people were affected by it and it wasn't just, you know, Teresa, the victim, it was a lot of officers and anybody that wasn't Steven, I felt was impacted by that film. And I think you'd be missing out simply because of that. If you don't like the Candace parts, then mute it and fast forward. But it is absolutely worth it from the standpoint, if you want to know the full story enough you'll deal with it. That's kind of how I look at it. If you're right. that interested in learning, but part of me makes, makes me think too, part of it feels almost like it's an excuse because I've had yes. so many people say, Oh, you know, that, not that I can't, I, they're, they're not showing anything I, I haven't heard. Oh, I, that's yeah. annoying. Yes. Yeah. Cause that, you that's, know, um, that. that's what we say. Look, we said that, that, you know, when, when they were, we heard this was coming out, uh, they were like, look, there's nothing they can say to change my mind. Physics is physics. Right. You know, it doesn't matter how bad of a person he is. I mean, he deserves to be in prison for throwing a cat in a fire. Right. Um, but yeah, you can't change my mind on all this. Kathleen Zeller's involved for Christ's sake. I know. Uh, so you know, but then you know, you know, the first couple episodes were more, oh, it's just a character assassination. And right. you know more of a revelation i think yeah you'd look we'd be like well, they probably could have put that in there they probably yeah. should have put that in there but it doesn't change the way i feel about it right. yeah but right. then we started getting the evidence and that's when you know we you know again we're you get attacked for just expressing an opinion but and that's fine we're, we're just here to look, seek the truth like everybody else and have a discussion about it but Right. Well, I think the reason that I was a little nervous about doing anything is because I'm already in the line of fire. I mean, I I watch it. I watch the shows that various people do on it. And sure. anybody who's trying to consider the other side is attacked. Yes. So every every episode we do, we're looking for the truth. We're looking for the truth. But yet we have our own dog expert and he says that couldn't happen that way. Yeah. And, you know, Brenda, you should have asked me this question instead of someone that doesn't know. You should have asked me this question. Oh, I <laughs> bet. Yeah, I bet you do get a lot of that. Yeah. Instead of, you know, the people from the crime lab, I should have asked him. So I'm definitely getting it, too. And I unfortunately can't sit back sometimes. And it's, it's very frustrating because those people I don't feel ever want the truth. They don't want to. They don't ever right. want to consider it for whatever reason. It's part of their lives, but they just don't want to. And they, they're saying the same thing about me. Brenda, you're just you're just a cop lover. Or you're just this yeah. and that. Right. But at the end of the day, I want everybody just to make up their own mind. Mm -hmm. And did we leave things out of convicting? Yeah, we did. You know, some of it was we hope that we can do more someday, that we can do more episodes and clues those things that just didn't quite fit yet. Or we right. couldn't get them done in time. I think but that would be it's cool. like, we open mind. That's actually perfect. I was going to say, you know, because that's one thing I 
I see on Twitter and some other videos I've watched, uh, Brenda, she's scared of conversations <laughs> or, or making a murderer is doing their own narrative. But I, we talked about the last podcast. Yeah. It's a little different when it's a rebuttal series, when, when they're literally showing you, like, here's what making a murderer showed, and then yes. here's what the full right. scene was in the trial or whatever it may right. be. It's a little different when you're reacting to something versus your own narrative. So Yes, yes. Yes. And I mean, I, I do have my own narrative, obviously, but the big difference I think is that I'm not cutting and pasting answers that don't belong together and adding right. editing in reaction shots for what, you know, that's the part that angered me so much about this process. The first time I ever realized how these edits were done was when I started looking at their making a murder episode five. And I realized it took me about an hour and a half to try to find in trial transcripts where they came up with the first 10 minutes of that episode. Wow. Right, wow. So I line by line did a comparison of the script of making a murder in the trial transcripts or the deposition transcripts. And I, I could at first I couldn't understand, like, why are they removing end zipper? Okay, you you can do that because it could be confusing, right? Mm -hmm. the zipper guy, then you have to explain it and does it really matter? So I was kind of explaining away those edits, but then when you start to get into some of them, it just kind of came together for me that, wow, I need to go further with this. I really need to figure it out. And it angered me so much that I just, right. you know, that's really been my driving force behind it is wanting people to see what was done with this film. This is not right. This should not have happened. You know, would we be here today if those edits didn't happen? Probably not. Right. right. But it's still I agree. a good story. It still was a good story without those edits, but you know, it's still hard. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, that was Sean's point. I've saw a few, you know, he's done some podcasts, obviously, mm -hmm. and you know, being the a, a documentarian, his point was I'm doing this to save the industry because that's a bad look. It is. You're supposed to be documenting the truth or whatever, and then you right. literally edit testimony and rearrange shots, and and I mean, that's that's deceiving. It's just. They can't deny that, and that's, I believe, it goes back to what you were saying. I don't think they want to see that, even if they still won't change their mind about guilt or innocence. I'll the way it was done. Right, right. I mean, it, I'll it say this. I, started. Yep. I, I just turned 50 in May, um, and what I find is that um, I think my, our generation, we get called gullible a lot, especially by my kids. You know, okay, I'll, go, sure. I'll go and I'll show my kids this video and I'll be like, how in the heck did they do that? And they're like, dad, you're so gullible. They just played it in reverse. And I'm like, oh God, oh yeah. And I'm like, well, I come from a generation where you didn't have to question everything right. that you see, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, call me gullible, but I think I'm just trusting in people. I, I gen genuinely believe people are telling me the truth and the things I'm seeing, you know, if you put it out there, uh, I would think you wouldn't be putting out there something as twisted as some of the things you guys pointed out. Right. Who discovered the the fact that they um, showed Andy Coburn um, his reaction that they put it in there three different times? Yeah. Um, um, we suspected that because in Making a Murder, you can see it. I mean, there were Redditors that actually kind of went and looked at it. Oh, and said we, it's the exact same movement or right. whatever? Okay. But then when we got the trial, we licensed the trial footage we found like exactly where it was so we could see they were using that reaction shot but we didn't know where they were from so we we got the trial footage and that's when we really were able to see what they were doing and you know i get it it's entertainment and you want to make it more exciting but you're really impacting people's lives when you do that you know that wasn't that wasn't fair and i think part of the reason why it was makes me so angry is because I would, I, I just feel like you'd have to sell your soul almost to do that to somebody, to her family. You know, Mike Hallbach looked so sketchy in that film. They, oh, they didn't have to do that. Absolutely. We said this. Yeah. The get -go. We're like, they, they made me, and you sit back and think about this, how crazy this is. They took a family who lost their daughter, yeah. a sibling, whatever. And made them the villains, and I did not like the dude. I, I did. I could I, not I, stand I could, him. Just the way they portrayed him, or <laughs> yeah. whatever it was, the way yeah. he spoke. I don't know what it was, but I did not like this dude. I thought he was sketchy, and then yeah. the boyfriend and all that stuff as well. But yeah, when you start to think about that, they led us all down that path, though. They really did. 
they really did from the get-go from the hook you know mm-hmm. we have Stephen avery and custer I and mean, you were already just emotionally next next right just hooked in so absolutely insane the power of i think that goes to sean's point in that other interview i saw him in you know the power of filmmaking you know you mm-hmm. have power it's uh it's pretty insane do you remember that when we were younger documentaries were like yeah. watching 60 minutes yes i mean i hated documentaries so somewhere yeah. along the line, someone decided it was okay to make an entertainment and to call it art. Yeah. And it's a story, right. right? The end of nine kind of said that. It's, it's you know, we're storytellers. No, right. Yeah, well, we then you we kind understand. of gotta say that you're storytellers. You right. kind of gotta it call that out. <laughs> if we were watching a mockumentary, we knew it yeah. back in our day. Right. Right. But right. you could quote a documentary almost like quoting the encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this it's just it's wild to me how crooked some of that stuff was. And and I'm I'm really disappointed in myself as much as I am them. You may do my George Bush thing. Oh please. Yeah. yeah. Do, it. do the George Bush thing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't practiced in the mirror enough to think I don't think I can pull it off. Um fool me once. Shame on me. Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, I messed up and did that on our last podcast. I did it just like Bush did it, and I got a guy that cuts him up and does these little shorts. It's so funny. Oh wow! But yeah, I uh, I'll tell you, I I'll tell you where I'm on the fence, and and then maybe you can help me. Sure. Because I have watched, I have not read a bunch of court transcripts or anything. But I have watched like the interrogation videos. Sure. And I feel like the was it uh March 31st with Brendan? First, Brendan. March 1st. March 1st yeah. and then May 13th. I've seen those two. Okay. 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 And I feel like in those two, those guys are should have walked out of there going, This kid doesn't have a clue what's up or down that we're wasting our time here, yeah. but I felt like they were sitting on the edge of their seat, salivating, like steering him almost. Yeah. And I, and in my mind, I'm like, why, why do they want him so bad? There's something bigger going on here. I can't quite put all the pieces together, but something's up or they would, they probably, they, they could be out interviewing somebody else that knows a lot more and is not sitting here just spinning yarn after yarn. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm hung up on is like they're they it's like they needed him. And then as soon as they got something they felt like they could run with, Kratz is on TV saying this, let yeah. me tell you how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what really bothers me, if I'll be honest with you. Sure. So okay. And wow. then all the other little things, there are some things uh that I'm hung up on. He'll tell you. I, I'm hung up on the blood in the car. Like I feel like that is almost a nail in, in Stephen Avery's yeah. coffin right mm-hmm. it's hard to hard for me to grasp how that could happen yeah. but i'm not against the idea that it could happen right you know right. I, I, I couldn't tell you how to do it but uh yeah and brendan before you answered that as far as his thing with, with brendan just to just to add on to i think that's a lot of people you know that may watch this or whatever is yeah steven's probably guilty but brendan yeah i don't know and that's kind of where i'm at honestly because i do think there are parts like he's saying that seem very plainly coerced to me and then of course two judges federal judges agreed yeah some do and yeah corpus, mm-hmm. and then they upheld yeah. and of course they struck down again but uh yeah go, go ahead we we'll let let you talk okay did you either of you start from the beginning and watch like the november at all 2005 or the um february 27th mm-hmm. just okay. clips uh yeah. of okay. those but no um i think one of you had mentioned that, you know, couldn't they have spoken to other people that were more knowledgeable? One of the things I've said to Tom is how in the November 2005, as many times as he changed his stories, and keeping in mind, these are Marinette investigators, they don't know anything. They're an hour and a half, two hours away from us. So they called them up in the, in the cab, by the cabin, the police up there, and they literally were he was changing his story right and left about different questions they would ask him. And they had no idea. They knew very little on, on that November 6th. So right off the bat, I was like, why didn't you guys go talk to him right away? I mean, he clearly knew something. You know, he, he couldn't make up his mind. 
and that should be a red flag to me. I mean, if somebody's changing their story, to me, that's a red flag. And, you know, you know, if you think about it, like Stephen had inconsistent stories. Well, why does he have inconsistent stories? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So to me, I would have thought they would have wanted to question him sooner, but they didn't. They, they had other people to talk to. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think a lot of people believed in their heart or why everybody was so surprised when Brendan's announcement came out is because it was so unbelievable. Right. I mean, what? How? I, I was more angry, I think, at Stephen for bringing him into it. So regardless of what you think, whether it was the police that coerced him or Stephen or a combination of both, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, the kid was screwed over. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. It just depends on who you think it's by. True, and yeah. I, I'm not going to say that I 100% would bet my life on the fact that Brendan Dassey did everything he said he did. I right. I don't know because it was in the garage and then it was in the house and, well, you know, you brought up the fire. He did answer two of my biggest questions, though. Okay. Brendan did. And one of them was, why did they find bones in the Yonda burn barrel? I couldn't get it. Right. I couldn't figure it out. And the other one was, why if they burned her, was she in the back of the rev? It, same thing us, like us too she had to be moved it had to be body right. behind the thing in the cul-de-sac right right, right yeah right. exactly so is it easier to believe i guess throwing outcomes out is it easier to believe that what brendan said which is they shot her on the floor in the garage and then put her in the back of the rab because they were going to drive her and put her in a pond right and then they decided, well, you know, Brendan described that Stephen told him, well, let's just burn her. It's a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets rid of more evidence. Sure. So that, to me, it kind of answered that. And then the, the bones in the burn barrel, he had said that when the, um, when the fire was done, that he had taken the shovel and broken up the bones in the fire pit and then took them other places. So that that kind of I mean he answered those for me. Now would I have figured it out without him? I don't think so. I don't. No, I'm not saying that ma that makes him guilty. Right. I'm just saying if you start from the beginning and you really look at the things that he talked about, I definitely feel he was involved. And it's hard to believe that he could <laughs> the thing that got me, and this isn't on the YouTube version, I don't know why, but three months before making a murder came out. Brennan's um, March 1st was put out on, on YouTube, but it was missing like 25 minutes. Oh, and wow. Five missing minutes that were missing were Brendan saying that he had sex with Teresa. And I think for me, I couldn't never figure out why he would do it. I think he was afraid of Stephen. I really do. Um, I don't think he had guts enough once he knew about it to leave and go home. I think he was afraid of him. I guess, you know, if you don't listen to all or listen to all of those or even read the reports, it might make yeah. more sense. But he's an anomaly, man. He He's a tough one to figure out. He um, really is. He, he really is. And I mean, I wish he would have taken the plea. I really, really do because he would be out. Um, and, uh, but just the fact that his family was saying don't take it kind of makes you wonder too well why were they so concerned and and one thing i think candace said in the film too that stood out to me is stephen didn't bring up brendan until the fire right until barb right. sent him on the phone call so why yep. why if that's his alibi why wouldn't he say oh well we just had a little fire that night my my right. nephew it's a fantastic there. point it, yep it is. that's that's what we said was uh no i don't think a lot of people realized that was there was no fire until the Stephen call with Barb, right? right. And, and then she's like, no, the night I went to see Scott's mom in the hospital. Oh, yeah, well, then Brennan would have been with me. Yeah. Right. That was very It's odd. almost like a wink, wink, you better hush, because uh, yeah. uh, you're basically saying Brennan would have been with me that night. Yeah, and he's then, tied in with me then. He's <clears throat> tied in then. Mm -hmm. yep. right, right. And that, yeah. Right, right. And then that makes Barb, obviously, you know, she wants to protect her son, but you know, yeah. she don't. She she knows Stephen was, was done dirty to a degree before, and, right. and she's in a really tough position. But I do think I still can't get over her not being in that room. Um, is there something on? I mean, they said you know, well, she went out to smoke a cigarette or whatever. But during the interrogation, because I did watch the YouTube version, like you said, and I and I told James just before he came on, 
I do believe that you can watch parts of that and and see. Yeah, he's clearly guessing. Like, oh, what'd sure. you do? What'd you do to her head? Uh, cut her hair, punched mm -hmm. her. I think it was. That's yeah. But other parts, he's kind of free flowing, and he knew details that maybe he should know. But did we miss something before that? Did they cut out the YouTube version? Right, right. I, the only thing I really learned that they cut out was those parts where he, right. which were kind of graphic, obviously. So that could be the reason too. I don't know the reason sure. why it wasn't included. Um, but I remember thinking that was strange because I actually requested the original. And when I received it, it was kind of surprising that it was missing something right. I thought was really pretty important from a motive standpoint. Um, yeah, and me and James, you know, just speaking of the, the trailer stuff, I mean, we'll get into other evidence, obviously, but the trailer, right? There's there's just, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, <laughs> there's just no evidence other than this key. Let's put the key aside for a moment. Sure. There, there's no evidence. I mean, there's no evidence of anybody or her being in there. There's not a, a hair. There's not blood. There's not, uh, I guess, marks on the bedpost from shackles and ropes and all this thing. So it, I mean, to me, just based off of that, I think, you know, he knew stuff about the garage and the burn pit, saw something, whatever. But I just, me and James said, and not to get graphic, I don't think this young kid who was, you know, a virgin right. could physically do that i can't I imagine i don't think he could have just, just so and For see <laughs> on the may 13th um interrogation they actually ask him i'm guessing I mean, we're, we're going off that because i mean you're, we're putting ourselves in you know you're a kid you're already scared of that type of thing that yes long. and then to see the first time somebody tied up under a situation like that right. it just i can't i can't imagine mentally that you could, with your sweaty uncle standing in the yeah, corner cheering you on right. i don't understand that and I, I'm not laughing at it. I'm laughing it's, at this house. No. It sounds ludicrous. Yeah. It, really it does. It does. Really quick. So go ahead and get into more of the evidence, just based on the Brennan stuff. So what about Kayla? All right. Kayla's yes. turned them on, correct, to Brennan. Right. Because of Brendan had the the car interview where he asked about, you think he raped her, which was sure. very odd, obviously. Right. But James yeah. brought up a great point. Why would you not immediately follow up then? Because his next interview wasn't for months. Right. I believe. So right. what was there? And then what was the deal with Kayla? Uh, she changed her story several times. First, it was mm -hmm. talk to my cousin. He's losing weight and then acting sad lately. But we also told, you know, said to ourselves on the podcast before, um, that could have been a girl at school calling him fat. He, you know, there's right. a lot of things that could cause a kid of 16 and, and that IQ level, especially to to be depressed. So what's right. going on with Kayla? What's the, what's the situation? Um, well, one thing I wanted to add in there, too, is they have learned the police had learned they talked to the counselors before they went and spoke to brendan that day and they had also learned that there were a couple other things going on brendan had made comments that he was suicidal oh so hmm. that was a little bit of it too that i don't know that it really ever came out in too many places but there's also some jail calls around that time that um you know they brought him home from school one day and he had to be out in the shop by pa because you know, the teachers had called them and said he was suicidal. He was talking about, I, I don't want to say because I can't recall exactly, but, um, you know, going to hang himself, something along those lines. And they, they went and got him. The grandma did or Dolores did and brought him home. And he was, they kept him out in the garage by Chuck or Pa or something. So there was a little more to that. It wasn't just what Kayla said. Um, right. But as far as Kayla, I don't really want to get into anything outside of what we showed in the film. Okay. Uh, sure. I I respect their family really a lot because they welcome me knowing what I believed with open arms and let me film. Yeah, and, that's cool to hear. So I really do think the world of them and I have feelings about it, but I certainly don't want to speak out about that again. Sure. Understandable. Sure. Yeah. But she's she's a sweet girl and she loves her cousin. And I I feel yeah. really bad for that family because of that. I really yeah, do. She actually like... mentioned in making a murder, or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. convicting a murder. I'm going to do that several times, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. She, she felt pressured by Fassbender and yep. Weird, I believe, just by sure. being interrogated. So. Right. And she was 13 at the time, too. Right. So, well, I do yeah. have one thing that kind of shocked me, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you uh, since I heard it. Okay. All right. In his um, March 1st interview, 
there's a point where he's sitting on that couch and he looks up at one of them. They're standing by the door. I think they may have asked him if he wanted water or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he mentions, um, can I call my girlfriend? Okay. And, and to me now, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, to obviously thinking I'm on the fence here, I'm going. So he wasn't really, you know, this, um, too dumb or ugly or whatever to right. get a girlfriend right. then i'm gonna go waste my life and do this horrendous thing but i mean you could say that about anybody who's convicted sure. of something like that i i don't know it just it struck me i never heard that he even had a girlfriend well his definition of girlfriend is probably a little different than my definition of mm -hmm. girlfriend but um I don't think they were like a couple, like you would think. He was yeah. a girlfriend. And there were different names thrown out and different phone calls that he wanted to date this girl. Or they, There's a lot with them wanting to date people. Mm. And he had mentioned, I, I can't think of her name, which is probably fine. But I know that, actually, let me tell you one story I heard. This is kind of interesting. We didn't get to put this in. But there was his brother, Blaine. There was a report with the school, a girl named Cassie. Brendan liked her, but she liked Blaine. Uh oh. And he ended up telling Cassie that she was going to end up like Teresa. Oh. So wow. that was one thing we didn't we didn't have we couldn't fit it in or whatever it was. It would have been hard to explain. But I remember hearing that, thinking, "Oh, that's weird." But I know that there he want he did want a girlfriend and. I, I remember phone calls after he was arrested in March. I, I don't even know if he'd ever hung out with her yet. He had never right. kissed her. It wasn't, you know, like a month long relationship or anything. Yeah. So, and every but, time he did want to talk to her, she wouldn't take his calls. Now this is once he's arrested. So I'm sure his right. parents weren't too happy about that, right. but um, I don't think he did have a lot happy. of girls. And that did cross my mind that, you know, maybe, she talked to him a couple of times and all of a sudden, you know, that maybe they talked on the phone a couple of times and sure. he looks forward to that when he gets home talking yeah, to her, you know, though. I mean, I'm glad that's why you're here because those little details that we never hear from anything, right. uh, any documentary, uh, much less case files, right. Um, is those little comments that he would made, oh, you're going to end up like Teresa. I mean, that just, yeah, that's, that's powerful under pressure by cops at that moment. That's right. And stuff like that. Right. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, I guess my thoughts on Brendan are I feel really bad for him, but if he did do what he did, I don't like that. It's okay that Bobby's getting everything pinned on him. It's like, if you did it, own up to it and right. get your brother off. I just, I think it's terrible. I know it's what you have to do as a defense attorney. I just couldn't do it. I, I, I do feel really bad for everybody who's been accused without really relevant evidence. I just think that's kind of sad that that can be done. These people weren't, they couldn't bring them forward under Denny. You know, those mm -hmm. names were thrown out there. Ryan Hilgis was thrown right. out there. Bobby Dassey was thrown out there. They were all, they, they didn't have enough on them. And, you know, getting into the computer, man, would I love to get into the computer with you guys. I can oh yeah, please. That, I, I, he I, had I, that I, down. I, yep. okay. right here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, go for it. That's what I was going to say. That was one of my things was just yeah. you know, let you go on Bobby because obviously y'all are not covering season two directly, although some of the evidence, I think, during uh, convicting a murderer does kind of address what Kathleen Zellner, right. all the tests and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Bobby mm -hmm. Dassey, prime suspect for her, right? Um, yes. He, he uh, planted the blood. He got blood out of the sink, I guess, it followed her out, you know, did the whole recreation. Right. So, yeah, you know, all the stuff on his computer, the searches, search history, there were three folders on there named Teresa, Stephen, and DNA, which I think that can be explained by maybe. Right, or something right. Those together. are post, post. Post, murder. yeah, yeah, a little investigation of her own or something. Sure. But yeah. Get into Bobby Dassey, please. Okay. I, I, again, don't want to say too much because we didn't get into season two, but one thing I can tell you is mm -hmm. Stephen knew what was on that computer. He knew. I kind of got a gut feeling about that too. Yeah. And okay. his attorneys knew. And the reason the police even were interested back in 2006 with that computer was because Marie, Marie Avery, the niece, right. told um, the police that she IM'd with Brendan once in a while. 
So they're like, oh, there could be some messages on there about something. You know, we sure. should go get that computer. So they got a warrant for that. And they went and got it. And I'm going to maybe get the dates wrong, but I think it was April 21st. And they went and got the computer from Barb's house, the police did. And about half an hour later, Stephen calls Barb and he asks her, did my attorney come and get the computer yet? And she said, no, those other assholes got it. And he's like, oh. The lawyer gone? Which lawyer? Mine. No. He's still there? Yeah. Oh, no? Yeah. Who's he talking to? Fine. Oh. Oh. Oh, is he going to take the computer? Who? Who? The lawyer. Not yours. No, yours. <laughs> no. Why? Because the mother assholes came and got it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So the cops came and got it, but Stephen told Dean about it and sent Dean Strang over to get that computer before the cops did. Wow. So why well, would he care? Well, well. Why would Stephen care what's on that computer? Right. Wow. Uh, where was this? And, Where's this information? And did you? Oh, right. so you got to do a little research. But actually, and, this was from Stephen himself. This is kind of funny. I mean, he really kind of hung himself on this. In 2010, he filed a motion hearing, a post, post conviction, of course. Right. And he filed. Um, a motion with a bunch of different things in it. One of the things that the state really couldn't answer to, they needed, they recommended that the judge hire someone, which by the way was Judge Angela, the same judge who's been dealing with Avery for many, many years, right? So she ordered uh, um, an inspection of what his claims were, of what Avery was claiming. And what he was claiming was that when his attorneys were in the room with him or visiting him, the police or whoever the jail was listening, which you obviously can't do, right? right? So he claimed that. So they hired this guy to go and look into how they could have eavesdropped, how that could have happened. Um, and there's another situation you'll see in episode 10, so I won't go there, but there's another one that ties into this too. We didn't get this one in, um, but in this particular one, this guy did this investigation and it was one of Avery's exhibits in that appeal. And in the, the timeline, the guy went through everything for Avery and, and outlined the time frame of what happened. And he came back and determined that no, they weren't eavesdropping. The reason the cops went and got the computer is because Marie and had told the cops that they were I am. I am. And yeah. Yes. So it's literally in discovery of Avery's own appeal in 2013. Wow. Well, there you go. I well, mean, I mean, there's he did seem more knowledgeable than Barb herself about yeah, when she, she had she internet or not. Internet right. Then. So right. he'd been he'd been over there on that computer and yeah. knew when they had internet and when they didn't. And there's other phone calls too that I mean, literally, we could have put a lot in there about it. We just didn't want to hit too hard on things that were season two because we, you know, we don't know what we're going to do or if we're going to ever talk about that or do something with it. But um, we did have that ready to go in and we didn't, we couldn't get it all in. So there's a lot of cut scenes, I guess, that are still pretty interesting. And I thought that computer, I, you know, when some of those things came out about Bobby, it's not saying that it still isn't Bobby, but when you look at Bobby overall, the guy's, he was 19. Okay. I, my son is 30 and he couldn't have done what that 19 year old did, what you're saying he did. And, and I think the motive behind it is, okay, why, have you guys ever heard of anybody plant evidence to that degree to frame no, somebody? No, and that, that, I do wrestle with that a lot. Yeah, it's, we, we said that before. You, you, don't, you don't need the key when you think about it, you know, but yeah, you, you don't need to go to these extremes. Right. Uh, yeah. And contrary to popular belief, those are bones in the tire wires, not insulation, no matter what, right. how people defend that or explain it. You know, I'm going to tell you, that was a powerful that was a big image. One. It was it? one thing yes. take, taking bones from some other burn area and throwing them in there, but right. being intertwined yep. with steel bill. Yeah. And I interviewed, there's people that people don't realize that I've interviewed that would not go on camera. 
So I wouldn't necessarily right. ever say their names or anything, but I've talked to these experts about this and they've explained it. And the person, people who have literally looked at that tire have explained it to me, those tires with the, the burn print burn mm -hmm. fragments but i can't you know i can't get too detailed into those things so it's frustrating but it's frustrating that people are just saying oh that's insulation right yeah, yeah. You're wrong. but now and they're going to say when they watch this oh but she couldn't get into detail so it's right <laughs> yeah I mean, right did you yeah. know I, I have to call out for you guys a week from today is going to be episode one a foul plays rebuttal to our rebuttal are you serious <laughs> oh okay yeah, well, so I also going to continue for a while. I told yeah, so we may make a rebuttal to that. Just say and, okay. I'm interested to see. I think after episode ten, uh, <laughs> Kathleen Zellner may come out and say some things too. And I, I yeah. hope you guys are getting sharpened up for that because you know yeah. she's. I, I I told him I said, you know, it's interesting that she hasn't really said anything. She's got to be waiting She's on it. The, the I think finish. Something she did say before it even started was they have incorrect. Candace Owens has incorrect information. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's all she said. It's like yes. I, I haven't seen anything incorrect. I mean, you you may, may say an opinion's incorrect, but right. I mean, it's literally answering like a it's like you said rebuttal series. But that's that's really interesting. You have that kind of stuff. That's really kind of out. It, it is with the. Stephen knew so there's documentation for people mm -hmm. who may watch this there's documentation and phone calls that show that he was a very aware of the computer in Bobby's house absolutely and there's and his attorneys knew because he sent them there to get it so that's you, very disheartening to me that you know just it makes me angry but yes yeah, so do you think that Dean and Jerome Jeremy um Jer Jerome yeah yeah, do they they know? Do they think he's guilty? Do you think they? I mean, I know defense lawyers. That's their you know, yeah, they, their job. But yeah, it's always been my opinion that if you defend somebody, you should believe they're innocent. I I, I think. Yeah. But well, I know you don't have to by law. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know how any defense attorney can wrap their heads around, but they have to. I mean, they have to defend their person. Yeah. So, yeah. And zealously. And I think they did an amazing job. With what yeah, they no, did. I think I think they did they too. Really I just, did. It just made me this off the cuff. If they knew, yeah, I don't know. Stuff, yeah, you know. I I don't know. They'll never admit it one way or the other. Nor will Zellner. I mean, she never could. It's still her client. Right. It would be really mm -hmm. appropriate right. for any of them to do that. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not that smart. I feel like I can see it. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did see some interviews where they did, you know, they don't, they kind of don't respond. They're like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the jury thinks. And that's our right. job. And I understand that's, you know, and they did, they did to my, you know, to my knowledge, the best that they could. I agree. Uh, without being able to point to somebody else, like you said. Um, but speaking of Kathleen Zellner, I mean, just real quick, I know you said you don't, you know, I was going to ask you that later, actually. You know, do y'all have any plans for season two or whatever? But, what do you think of uh, you know season two all the testing you know they did the blood testing and it's impossible to you know crank the car with blood running you can't get it in that little recessed area sure. and then of course in convicting a murder we see how close the car is parked to the other right. one where mm -hmm. kratz actually says who i thought was the devil um <laughs> i mean i really did yes um and i think he would admit himself he was a pretty bad guy <laughs> yes. and all this stuff but Oh, yeah, you know, never never thought about him reaching back in from no, the passenger that, that side was dripping awesome. drip, drip to the key. Right. Um, what do you think about the Zellner stuff and what she's at least shown? I mean, I'm sure they didn't show everything in season two either, but yeah. what she's tested and then claiming that this is you know planted. I mean, I do have a lot of opinions about that, but if if we did anything with that season, you know, we would really be very, very careful and because she is a really great attorney she, she is she's, she's sure. done a lot of great work um so i don't want to get too detailed in that but i will share a couple things i found one of the things that stood out to me was when ryan hilligus it first came out that ryan hilligus was the guy and right. i remember reading that you know, somebody snuck onto the yard and gave a false name okay do you remember right. that? Does that ring a bell? Like one of one of the people gave a false name to get onto the property. What on their list? Uh, the check-in list? Yeah, or like like whatever it was. It was just a log. or something. Yep. Right, right. 
And so when I figured, I found out what the exhibit was, when we got the exhibits for it, it said from Ryan Kilgis group. So Ryan Hilgis, it said from Ryan Kilgis group. And that was the exhibit that went along with that, the receipt for what supported that statement, right? right. That I just told you. Mm -hmm. So I was at the courthouse one day, just randomly going through things. And I was going through the exhibits and I, and I noticed that there was something redacted on her version. And the one at the courthouse wasn't redacted. And at the very top of it, it said written by Ryan Hilgis. And that was redacted. And the things on the right was when he handed it over to the person collecting the maps. Because they're like little maps they draw when they'd see stuff and put flags. Okay, yeah. So he handed the map over to the officer. And she said, okay, what's your name? Ryan Kilgis. She heard Kilgis. 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 So she Makes wrote sense. from Ryan Kilgis group. The cop did. It's different penmanship. Mm -hmm. So I went, what? Yeah, That shocked me. I went. Like, how? Yeah. So those yeah. types of things, I that's the only example I really want to give, but that made that's, me dig. That's a good one. That's just a good kind one. Of, kind of like, it didn't seem very strong to me, and it just, I don't know. But I did do a lot of research on her things, and she had, a, and she definitely, I wanted to look into a lot of different things in that case, and I do feel like we'd have a lot of great things to say about some of those things. And things have changed since she's done that, too. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I think one thing too with the brain fingerprinting, I yeah, don't know how yeah, much more yeah. into that. Mm -hmm. Um Stephen told Earl, I'm gonna share a little bit of information here, but Stephen told Earl that if he lied, he'd be electrocuted. I just I just read this today. I'm glad you said that. I, Go I, ahead. I'm sorry. Just yeah. no, that's okay. Did you read Sean's comment? I'm like, uh, well, if he's it, putting uh, it out there, I'm gonna say it, it might have been Sean actually, because okay. he was very active today on Twitter. <laughs> Sean was? He was. Uh, there was a few <laughs> a few responses to some people yeah. um that also covered this. And then uh, that's what actually surprised us when you know whatever whatever happened and he, he had to cancel, but because he was just active just a couple hours prior. So yeah, but, he it may, may have been if, it's her yeah, 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 I can understand. Yeah. If he lied, he'd get ex ex electrocuted. Yeah, he, he, so yeah, he told they yeah. and they uh, y'all left this out, or I believe it was Sean who said that, but yeah. um he had told uh his brother, yeah, that if he if he lied he'd get electrocuted so, <laughs> or whatever it was. I can't yeah. something yeah, very but, odd. Yeah. But the theory with brain fingerprinting, I don't know how much you guys have looked into it, but I, I did a little bit, is you you have like keywords. So back door, cargo door open, you know, hammer, right. hammer on the head. Right. right. So right. you're not like doing a lie detector test where no. okay, my heart rate changes or whatever it is because I'm lying. This is like if you have any memory of it. So it probably would work. Yeah, I, I like the somebody, right? I like the concept. Yeah. I yeah, think they're like on the, they're on the something. Yeah. I wouldn't bet my life on it. Right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have sure, anything. I'm on sure it. it's not admissible. I think that was just more of a Zellner test, mm -hmm. right? Just because she wants to believe the her client, I guess. Wait, of course she does. Yeah. I mean, it's it's coming from him. These things are coming from him. I mean, the sink blood, obviously that came up years ago. That's not new. Right. You know, he brought that up years ago in the in the phone calls, but I just can't see Bobby. You know, the other thing that kind of threw me off too is that you know how he had a scab? It clearly wasn't when he that day, I don't believe he had a new cut. I think it was a cut that was there that maybe ripped open. Mm -hmm. And the thing that always threw me off is these blood crusts. Yeah. Yeah. And you're it's, it's, you're planting floor, blood, you're gonna be scraping blood, you're gonna be pipetting it or q-tipping it and doing it in six different places and three different patterns. Who the hell is gonna plant blood like that? Nobody, right? Right. And then you got these right. little crumbles. So to me, it always made more sense that those came from like his scab. Culhane yeah. described them as blood crusts. Yes. Blood flakes, blood crusts. So to me, it was like, you know, maybe you cut it open at some point and it was like the blood crumble that came up, fell on the carpet in the car or something. Right, right. So yeah, I, like I think things. Kathleen was like maybe implying that they were, that was something that was scraped yes. off yes, the, from, from the yes. sink and then just sprinkled and in there. That's what we said yes. last, last week was, you know, to believe that this is planted without the bowel and that was eliminated before they didn't, right. have, you know, they dropped yep. that immediately yes, with, the, yes. with the testimony about the nurse and all that stuff. But it, you have to believe that somebody knew he was bleeding 
went in his house, somehow collected that in the sink enough of a liquid blood where it's not coagulated. Right. And then immediately had access to the car with whatever droplet tool and Q-tips or whatever it is. I mean, you, you just have to have a source of blood for that to happen. Right. And I, I just, Bobby, okay, let's just say it is Bobby. Bobby is in that car. You know, what do you have, a little yeah. fine tip? artist brush that he's in there dabbing these little tiny spots because it wasn't you know that's why i wanted to enhance it and show their smudges up around it isn't just this like quick boop. yeah right and mm -hmm. there was like three other sections you couldn't right. see uh, with the contrast right, right. yeah yeah so, yeah that was pretty yeah and that, that you know that's what made me start really back you know i guess backpedaling from the original um cam mentality right was you know just being so emotional wrapped up in this case. And then we did the podcast three or four years ago when we saw it, it was like, uh, you didn't even think about, okay, he could have reached across from this way, but they didn't show how the car was parked. No, It was just the same old shot of somebody clumsily hiding a, a, a car with a couple branches and a hood. So right. <laughs> you don't, and if you, it takes you out of the, the emotional part takes you out of the logic. Uh, you know, logical thinking and or critical thinking, I guess, and you just get wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. that was one of the other things that we looked at each other and was like, <laughs> yeah, right. What was the moment that you do you guys remember? Like, did you have one moment where you both looked at each other and went, Episode four uh, was the big yeah, one? Four was really I don't remember specifically, but I know it was your episode four. Yeah. I that watched your. Your, you started getting into some evidence and not mm -hmm. just the, the Stephen Avery's, you know, obviously the character revelation and the details about prior crimes. And, you know, and I don't honestly, it was almost the way they put it too. I mean, not, this wasn't necessarily the a moment, but, or just a, this one that stands out is they always say he, he served 18 years in right. prison for some reason. No, he served 12. Mm -hmm. And then I know it's kind of either way, it's yeah. just kind of semantics, but. Six of those were for a legitimate crime. Right. Um, and then I think uh, it was, um, you know, and then hearing that he ordered her to get in the car mm -hmm. when he ran her off the road, but she actually didn't, I know. So somebody could say, well, you know, but he still did and ordered her to get in the car. Right. So those little things. And then um, I think it's when it you know, started getting into the story changing for me because we always heard he never changed his story. Yeah. And then when you hear that there was no fire until Brendan mentioned it, like we said earlier, right. um, he changed his story from you brought it up. Mm -hmm. I think it was when he told Earl, yeah. she never showed up. That bothered me. That, that was the first thing for sure. Yeah, that was Bob Fabian. Um, Earl was Earl admits he he doesn't remember that. But Bob Fabian actually is his was his brother in law at the time. Yeah, right, right. so you know he came over to go. The three of them were car. there, right? Yeah, I think Earl said he was in the loader. He he saw those two there, and um, you know Stephen came out of Ma's house to Lars and Al's house, and Chuck apparently yelled over. But you know Chuck, I guess doesn't remember it either. He's not saying it didn't happen per se. He just doesn't remember it. So Stephen said that he never was up at Ma's that day, but yet he also said he was there for dinner. So it's it's hard to keep track of what he says and when, to be honest. Um, but it, it's weird because people keep making excuses for him. Yes. Well, right, because I could buy into um, him being afraid to talk to the cops about a missing woman on that he had seen. Right. But he was quick to talk to the press. Right. Yeah. Love the talk. Yeah. So that was kind of shocking to me. Um, and you and know. almost, I mean, again, it's conjecture, but it's almost like I want to get out there that I didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. I want to talk so bad. Right. Yeah. But he, and he did want to talk to the cops. He, he did on November 5th and 6th, he spoke to them and his lawyer even called. His, his civil attorney even called and said, you know, stop talking. What are you doing? And he's, <laughs> they, he got right back in the car and started talking again. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Feels untouchable. Yeah, maybe that makes sense to me. He, he felt he was, and he very rightly had, he had the right to be upset about what happened to him. I mean, he didn't deserve to go to prison for those years. Sure. 
That's right. Yeah, and that's what we said. You know, sure, you could be the cops start showing up. You know, this girl goes missing. You know, you could be nervous about that. They've already put you in prison for right. you know, mm-hmm. eighteen years, right? Right. But that's certainly possible. Sure, and you gotta yeah. Yeah, acknowledge that. Right. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. go ahead, James. No, no, no. I, I was just gonna say, um, because like the first, the the first, um, the sexual assault that he did time for. Uh-huh. the sketch artist yeah <laughs> right like to me i do i i really don't think that it's anything that the producers did or uh you know the makers of making a murderer did i think they did they wouldn't even have to spin it this way if they showed that mugshot and then uh-huh. showed his sketch i would have drawn that on my own conclusion yeah. that he saw that right so I still believe in my heart that, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. people on that side will do some sketchy things, sure. you know? And so Nana and I, I think you're um, the convicting murderer says, or pointed out to me that, um, Gosh, I, I know the guy's name. He had the blue ribbon oh, laid out. Yeah, oh, 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 Kelly. Okay. Oh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Yeah, oh, Thank Kelly. You. So, yes. 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 Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> he he reminded me of the sketch artist, right? From the oh, first right. thing, you know. I, I'm uh, same. I, I I don't know that that whole thing. Whether it was introduced in trial or what, I don't know. It, it wasn't. It it. Wasn't. it it seems like it should have been, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, let, me, I, let me fill you in a little bit more on the Gene, well, not Gene Cachet. We'll come back to the sketch artist thing, but the O'Kelly thing. First of all, Brendan confessed on March 1st. Len Kaczynski took the case on March 7th. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, he so, was handed a bad deal. Yeah. He was. And the first thing he did was to file a motion to suppress that March 1st confession. Right. Okay. Once that happened and they lost, what do you have? I know. You don't have a defense at all, right? right. They hear that confession. You're trying to get a plea bargain. Yes. Now, did he go about it right? No. But at that point, Brendan, he was considering it, right? Yeah. And in some convoluted way, I think O'Kelly thought he knew best for him and he was going to he was going to get him to say this and and change his mind and get him to confess and do yeah, that i mean that was horrible to watch because it was all, you know lynn's not there during these oh, interrogations no. and right. then this guy's literally we said it out loud he's working for the fucking prosecution mm-hmm. he was i believe that too i totally do because yeah. the prosecution did want brendan to take a plea deal yeah oh yeah they did. absolutely mm-hmm. Because they they didn't want, I mean, they did feel bad. I believe they did feel bad for Brendan. But yeah. were they calling each other on the phone and walking them through it? No. But of course, the prosecution would have said, well, if you don't, we need more. We're not just going to give them a plea without more. You, right. You're not giving us anything. So I think yeah. that O'Kelly took it upon himself to go and try to nudge this or hold them down and yeah. <laughs> torture them. Um, but, you know, none of that made it into trial. None of it. That confession didn't make it in. Uh, they never brought it up because it was irrelevant. Brendan had already confessed. They only used the March 1st confession before Lenny even came on. So the only reason we even know about that is because in Brendan's appeal in 2010, right. they, of course, went through all the old files. And that's actually how I got access to some of the things I was reading in episode nine about Brendan said, unless it was 10 years, they wouldn't even consider it. Yeah, that's right. from that that appeal okay so um you know they requested everything and once you do that it all becomes public record pretty much right so um but i mean it wasn't right i don't think that should ever happen but i think in his heart he thought he was doing the right thing by trying to get him to um admit it and then do you blame his family too because they wouldn't let him even consider it and it was coming from Stephen behind the scenes, like right, you know, right. get him to cancel, get rid of that lawyer. But, and he did eventually get rid of that lawyer, and they got the new lawyers. And you know what I found interesting too was that those lawyers were working with Stephen's lawyers. Right. So there's emails between Dean and Jerry talking to Brendan's attorneys. Hmm. 
Hmm. About you know the different uh, types of con- uh, only we can really understand the true situation that we're in. So it's like, well, I I just I don't I'm not a lawyer. But right. To me, it was like, shouldn't you worry about your own client? Right. And they were giving him, uh, they were giving them recommendations. I, I don't know. It's obviously not illegal because it would have been brought out. But that just seemed odd to me that they were working with them or staying in touch and handing over experts and stuff for them to use for suggestibility and things like that. Right. Yeah, they're so intertwined, I think, is, but yeah, that's, see, that's new, new information. And it is, yeah. <laughs> But like Stephen could have gotten out the first time if you know. Yeah. But I, oh, I, oh, you mean if he lo- if he would have said he did it? You mean yes, right, yes. right. Yeah. Um, he could have. You're right. I I mean he could have. When would he have been up for parole? His mandatory release actually was within a few years of when he was released, so he would have been out within a couple of years anyway. Uh, but you're right. I he didn't. I mean he didn't ever change and i don't think Stephen would ever admit he did it i really don't i don't think if i, I don't think he'll ever admit it to anyone yeah that he actually did it. at this point was he's got nothing to gain from it but i you know i wish if, if this is the case where he is guilty and brendan helped or whatever i wish he could go brendan for brendan's sake and his family yeah yep go to your attorney and say, look, I will, I'll, I'll be crystal clear, you know, and tell you exactly just for closure for, for the family and everybody right. else for that matter. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll testify. I'll write it down, whatever you want to do. Um, get me out of here. I've served enough time and I'll tell you exactly what happened. I wish that was the case. But... I don't think, I, this is my opinion, but can you imagine if Brendan went to his attorneys who have re- been representing him for how many years and said, right. I now want to change. Yes. I did it. How would that look for the innocence project? Exactly. Rough. They really, I mean, that was a big touching thing in season two, right? Was mm-hmm. the whole thing, them arguing and going to the federal courts right? and the whole thing and winning. And it was like, Oh shit, he's going to be released. Mm-hmm. And then when you, know, was that thought, those? Yeah. Those... And then when you thought, Oh, you were thought you about that immediately? Mm-hmm. Like when his falls apart and his conviction is thrown out, Stevens almost has to crumble. Right. And they're so intertwined. Right. Yeah. They are. And they absolutely are. Um, but yeah, I went to that and I didn't know a lot about it, but I thought it was a shoe in. I mean, I thought there was no way in heck he was gonna get out. It was because the thing is at that level, you you can't change law. I mean it's right. like right. appeal court and it's so sad, but I mean we're glad it's that way. I'm just talking about this particular case. Right. I, they didn't, you know, you could go along and check off, well, you did this. Is that illegal? No. Okay, well, you did this. Okay, well, is that illegal? No. But because you did all these together, right. it's death by a thousand cuts. So we think you should let him go. Right. So I think that, I mean, Brendan is a very sympathetic character. I, I totally agree with that. But I also think that if he did come forward, I don't know if he'd ever be able to do that. Right. I don't know. I mean, I almost want to say, gosh, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Obviously, I can't do anything for him, but I do. Yeah, I thought about that before. I was like, what if I could just talk to this kid? And I like, know. Just behind closed doors myself. I could get him to talk. I could. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, mean, I think everybody feels like that. I know, because you do feel for him. But, you know, right. he, he was slow, but he wasn't as slow as people make him out to be. Do I think he was yeah. this... Um, psychopath no i don't right right i don't know i i would hope my 16 year old son at the time would not have been convinced to do that or to right be forced by whoever right but i also could almost understand it in a way but brendan he was he was in mostly normal classes he didn't get great grades my son barely passed high school mm-hmm. right, right. But he had he was in the process of getting his driver's license I mean, that to me, it's like, if you can drive, you, you know, things like that. So I don't think he was quite as, as ignorant as he's made out to be. I think he can dress himself. Right. Uh, or more also, just maybe socially awkward. Uh, yeah. Something like exactly. that. Yeah. Introverted, shy. Yeah. Um, low, low self-esteem. Easily sure. suggestible, right? Yes. Easily. And that's the thing with the interrogation. You two on one. You know, he need he needed somebody there representing him. 
everything would have unfolded so differently <laughs> if he had legal representation. Yeah. Or, at least, you know, or, may, or Barb, or, you know. Or uh, Barb. She's all over the place, she too. She is. I don't uh, understand how he, you, like, I mean, she says that, you know, you know, they told me to go wait in the waiting room. But no, why? Why did no you? Why did you go to the waiting room? You don't have to do that. They didn't. No way. I, no, I would have slammed my way into that. But you know, one thing I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know that Barb being in that room would have helped him. And I'll tell you why. The one, and I just got in a debate on this today or yesterday, that they were bringing up that they didn't record the Fox Hills Resort interview, right? Mm -hmm. so after he did the 227 before the March 1st, like, he admitted he was a witness. He saw her in the fire. Right? right. That's pretty much it. That evening when they put him in Fox Hills, the police were talking to other people. Okay. Right. One of them told the officers that Barb had told them that Brendan came home with bleach on his jeans that night. The officers go to Fox Hills. They don't record it because it's, it's not a sit down interview. It's not, I wish they would have, but they didn't. They should have. Probably. I think right. Tom would even admit that, that they, that would be great if they could go back and do that because that's when they found out that night that Brendan cleaned the garage with bleach. Wow. Right. So Barb in the room, it's, and this isn't a report and Tom remembered this too, but he basically said, well, you know, Hey, we just heard that you were in the garage some night cleaning. And, and Brendan was like, no, no, it was like the night before it was the night before or something. Barb's like, no, no. <laughs> Kind of like she did with Steven. She's like, right. no, no, you, you don't you remember, Brendan? It was that oh, night. You came home with bleach on your jeans. So oh to my me, God. Like... <laughs> I mean, so we said that. We had never heard about jeans with bleach on them. And there it is in convicting a murder. We, we, we couldn't, I know, we couldn't mention it because we had seen past Beyond Seven. Right, before. With the screeners, right. we, we were told not to spoil anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to say it so bad. Yeah. And there yeah. you go. I mean, I, I can't know. believe her. She so she gets Stephen. No, remember, there's a fire, and then tells Brendan. No, remember? Yeah, no, 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 I no. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know that she Bart did him it. A whole lot. <laughs> She's no, no, this is why you're here. Thank you. I mean, she, it awesome. really starts to kind of at least clarify some things. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, there's god. so much more. You guys could research this case for a hundred years, I swear. I mean, I, I believe that. Uh, really, more episodes. Yeah. Oh. The cachet thing, I have to say it before. I yes, yes. Okay, so do you guys think that he went in the room? Because I wanted to do more with the old case. I really, really did. But it would okay. have been I want to do a prequel, actually. I really Please do. I do. Yeah. I would love to. Um, yeah, so they, when, when he came into the room, what do you guys think happened? Like when he did the sketch? Okay. And, and what you, your impression was? Like, how do you think that happened? He saw the picture and then did what? Uh, I believe... He, yeah, just pretty much had one here and did a quick sketch like okay. that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't so think he put like... his best foot forward. It was a decent sketch, you know. <laughs> pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. It, Where it, was he know. when he was doing it? Oh, 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 I have, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't begin to know. Okay. I mean, you would think it'd be wherever he's interviewing Penny, right? Right, right. So he um, was in the room with Penny. And Penny's testimony and Jean's cachets was that he started with the nose. And, and I may be wrong on which where he started. He started with the nose. She would hand, he would show her and she would say, nope, nope, a little more narrow. Okay. And he draw it. He did the eyes, showed her, said, nope, nope, like the lids or something were too deep or too wide or something. Right. So she testified that's how they drew the sketch. So did Cachet. So that's, I didn't look into that at all. I mean, I knew that the, the way they were <laughs> it, that he drew off the thing. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> that, that kills me. There's a, so it's just one in a million. I mean, because I could easily, I was so ready to say, well, he didn't have to have the picture here. He could have sure. been looking at it, it hanging on his wall or whatever. Yeah. And so he, out of memory, he drew it that good. But you're saying she made him alter it. Yep. That's wild. The, another one, too, that they did in Making a Murder. Remember them saying, they didn't even have the same eye color. Stephen yeah, has yeah. brown eyes. 
or blue yeah, eyes. Both, both, both blue, both Al, uh, Alan and Avery, right? I believe. Yes. Yes. Totally. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And I, I always go back to too, when you look at the height difference and how Penny described him, he was her height. Okay. Penny's like five. She's my height. She's like five, 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 six. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's 5'11. No, he's not. No way. Not Is Steven. He? No. I know. I know. You're, no, I, I, I pictured him being Steven's same height no, and everything. No, he's 5'11". So even wow. if they knew about him, would they have even pulled it? No. Why? I, you're I mean, not going to put a 5'11 guy in the lineup in if the she lineup. said he's my height? Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense now that you said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can go on and on with that. I feel like, for her. I really do feel I for her. Too. I mean, yeah. she feels so bad oh, about yes. all that. Yeah, yes. twice, I don't you know, blame her. I don't. Like, no. I heard something about one. Oh, he was the one with the beard at the time. So with stuff like that, I don't know. Yes. But yeah, the, the height makes complete sense, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah. But yeah, that's suspects. pretty wild. That kind of They're eliminates Alan. I kind mean, of, yeah. I mean, they could have still put him in there, but I mean, can sure. you imagine trying to find people that look like Stephen that are that no. height? And in the live lineup that that have beards in summer in the summertime, right. and they're right. that height and they're all fully bearded, and she's got to stand and look at them. I mean, I can't even imagine trying to find people that are five, 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 six, five, five. Right. It's really short. And then, you know, doing that trying to do that but they also they said they never talked to other suspects and there was actually somebody in the live lineup that was another suspect too oh good right yeah. well that makes me four, feel a little better there's like four other yeah. suspects so okay okay yeah well that that clears that yeah up. i mean they make it feel like like the they three do. stooges and then steven they do. You right. Know? Right. Uh, well, and i'm not... certainly not condoning that they didn't screw up because they did screw up no sure. they did absolutely 100 percent um, kind of piggybacking off of that, um, going back to Colburn for a second, I wanted to yep. ask you, um, in Convicting a Murder, he tells the story of the phone call, the yes. infamous phone call, the big gotcha moment. We talked about this a little bit in the last one, but get your perspective on it. He he tells the story and, you know, people are saying, well, that's just his story. He's lying because he lost a lawsuit to Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think, okay, I, and I read through some of these files of the lawsuit of Netflix yeah. and why he lost, but. How does that connect to the phone call and him being out of country during the first, you know, um, crime? Yeah, and talk then about only that. A jailer, and when he took the phone call, and then he lost a defamation lawsuit to Netflix. So somehow that makes him lying and convicting a murderer. Explain. Sure. <laughs> so they're they're talking more about the dispatch call, right? So that when the, her car was found, they well, no, first, oh, first the night before. Yeah, the, the first that. one, and then the yeah, of course, the dispatch yes. call. But um, yeah, the first one, they're saying, well, he lost this, so he's clearly lying. Is he just making it up? I, I think they're just saying that he was lying then, and the judge saw through it, and he's still lying. Basically, is what they're You're right. Saying. Yeah, that was kind of my point. There was no correlation, to my knowledge, about his lawsuit with Netflix and the judge calling him a liar or whatever, and losing right. the case to him being a liar and making up that. You know, he didn't really go to the sheriff uh, during that phone call, right, and say, we got our guy. You right, know? right, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, that's what I hear on Twitter. That's what I'm seeing, you know, these things. About he's full of shit. He's still lying, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, mean, I, didn't they, know if you had, I didn't know if you had more insight on that. And, of course, we did. We, yeah. And, of course, the other, obviously, license plate call were clearly it was the time of zippers. And I mean, correct us if, if we're wrong. But no, clearly that was exactly at the time right. of the zippers and the church mm -hmm. parking lot verifying what he wrote down from a detective. Okay. To me, we said, uh, James said this before, it's just as likely that that happened than it is for some nefarious thing to have occurred yeah. where he's standing behind the, the car somewhere. You know, honestly, that's the best thing I, Chris, I'll tell people too. When you're looking at this case, you can rabbit hole the heck out of it. Yes. But you have to ask yourself, okay, they, they didn't do something. All right. Well, what does that mean? Right. At the end of the day, what does that mean? So they didn't record the 227 um, with Brendan, right? What does that mean? It means nothing. I mean, what, what right. would have changed if that had happened? Not everything right. nefarious, you know, or nefarious. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the thing with Andy, and I'm going to be fully transparent here. I was actually deposed in that lawsuit. Wow. Oh, okay. Lawsuit. And I always want to be completely transparent about that because they think, you know, I'm just 
you know, Manitowoc funded our project and everything, and that's certainly not the case. But yeah, like we are now daily wire stooges for some reason. Yeah, oh, right. Okay. Your shells, your shells. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we paid you to talk good about us. Um, right. It's very conspiracy theory, and app, you're going to have comments. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be great. You're going to have so oh, many yeah. comments after this, and if she doesn't know what she's <laughs> talking about, <laughs> you got to come with CR stuff and. Yeah, it's it's entertaining but frustrating. Too. Well, that's what I mean. They want you to read all the case files like they all have, the armchair investigators, and that's fine. I mean, look, a lot of people are into the case, but if you have a different outcome and opinion from that same file, then right. you're a shield or whatever. Anyway. Oh, right, yeah, you're not allowed. But have you guys ever seen that, you, James, being in that? Have you ever seen anything like this in any of the true crime stories you've ever worked on or saw oh where where people dig their heels in yeah. and have this battle i don't think so no i don't know what no. it is i mean yeah. avery sending him gifts and money every year like birthday cards they they thought we had this conspiracy to release episode nine exactly on brendan's birthday oh that. wow that really was a weird coincidence by the way but that was not planned at all wow. so that was a total coincidence which i thought was oh that's kind of interesting that was on today uh twitter about responding to that they said absolutely no coincidence i mean he's like did you think we and he said it was delivered late it like was the, late late to the daily wire so well. yeah. it was supposed to be out in july like right around the fourth of july and yeah right. we we had a lot to do yet so we wanted to do it better and we right. did i think but uh there's always an answer to it and yeah that's unfortunate because you do want the people that really want the truth yeah, right. To to have that opportunity and not feel like they can't, but I've I've just never witnessed anything like this with anything in my life ever. That I, I don't know. I, I always said Stephen Avery is gonna go down in history as the most ignorant master manipulator in the history of time. Because yeah. I feel like he's manipulated so many people through this whole process. Right. Wow. Yeah. And well, I, there's all, there's this, we talked about it in our first, we did a podcast on this back when we thought they were innocent. Mm -hmm. I think oh, it's that cool. underdog that I think people, you know, looked at him as like him against the man, you know, yeah. um, big brother. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, he, he just, he seemed like this perfect yeah. underdog story because it had already railroaded him one time and yeah. then this happens. Right. Um, mm -hmm. the, the fact is, and we just talked about this in the kitchen is as much as I want to believe that there's this huge conspiracy, the cops did not kill her, you yeah. know? No, so you, you got to go with either the cops killed her or they worked with the killer. The, uh, they had, yeah. Yeah. I mean, or, or, or you had just by sheer luck, you had the cops trying to do some framing yeah. and the real killer trying right. to do it at the same time and i don't know it's it is it's tough it's tough but yeah, um it's tough especially once you're you have this mindset it's over in your mind he's innocent and then to see this new stuff thrown in your face it, it, i mean i get it but yeah really quick though i don't want you to stray you were deposed Oh, yes. Um, I'm, I'm yes. Sure. No, no, that's okay. I just wanted to be fully transparent about that because, you know, I'm sure they'll bring it up. I'm just best friends with Andy Colburn. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm unique from a producer standpoint because I didn't go into it as a producer. I built relationships and right. every one of these people, I didn't want to, you know, anyone to be affected by it. I felt strongly about the promises I was telling them that it was, you know, going to be what I told them. So with Andy Colburn, I knew him because of the book writing, as I mentioned. And just as I learned more and more, I learned these things about making a murder before Sean, obviously. So I was helping with the books. And when he decided he wanted to file a lawsuit, we were just getting in with Sean. Okay. And I wasn't, I mean, I was a nothing. I mean, I was literally in Wisconsin checking a few things. I wasn't important in any way, shape or form at that point, right? So. I fact checked his complaint. Okay. His original complaint. Okay. Well, when Andy left, he retired. He sent me a boatload of all of his emails. 
So I have like 4,000 texts from him. So ding, 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 my name's coming up and Netflix's radar going, hey, right. who's this Brenda girl? Yeah. So, you know, the next thing I know, they're calling me and wanting to come over with a flash drive and take my entire computer and Man. because we're making a film and they tried, they tried to get our footage through that, which just uh, blows my mind. Me too. Because that would have become or could have become FOIA, could have become Freedom of Information Act. And that's like, right, right. wow. So it was it was a scary process to go through, believe me. But I mean, I've never, I didn't have anything to hide. Yeah, I didn't communicate with those guys. Communicate with Earl Avery. Communicate right. with Candy Avery. You know, Candy Avery, um, Tom Fassbender. I stay in touch with all those people. So first time you uh, ever heard of, Andrew Colburn was making a murderer. Yes. And so your first time meeting him, mm-hmm. how was it? The, <laughs> I was the, the man... first civilian. The first civilian that I'm the only civilian that ever he ever opened up to or talked to. Wow. And I because I was able to name drop Michael Griesbach, who was the assistant district attorney whose book I just helped him with. Okay. So it was weird. I mean, you know, you see this guy on TV. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to him, obviously, because I wanted to ask him about that key. Yeah. <laughs> right? yep. So you, I remember exactly. It was a Sunday. He opened the door. He had just come from church. Um, his wife at the time, unfortunately, sweet, sweet person. Uh, she was going to leave us alone. I said, no, I want I want you here, too. And he, he was nervous, I think, because I, I think cops are just genuinely uh, skeptical. I would say so. And and I really had to have, a lot of people had to vouch for me, for me to be able to talk for, to them, basically. Okay. So, right. but no, it was great. But he was, he was um, very, I think, just a little scared. I was thrilled. You know, I'm hyper. I'm all yeah. like, oh, oh dude, I came in with boxes. Yeah. I got these binders that I'm opening up. Look at this. Tell me about this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, um. <laughs> You know, I'm hyped up on coffee. He's like, okay, <laughs> little lady. Okay, young lady, settle yeah. down. Yes, yes. I just came from church. You're like bouncing off the walls. Because I was so, I get really hyper when I have, I was so excited. And yeah, but it, it was great. I just think I probably terrified him at first. <laughs> My hyperness. But... Well, if if anything, you, the convicting a murderer changed our mind about him. So kudos yeah. to you guys for that. Yeah. Um, I hope it, I, I, we, that's one reason we wanted other people to see the thing right. is to go, you know, if you just yeah. take the, the way you feel about him, mm-hmm. then, you know, that's just little, a, a little small piece of the stuff that they're going to change your mind about. Right. It's yeah, so wild. I, I, that's what I told him. I said, it's very odd after I think we did the mid season review after three or four episodes or up to five, I guess. But um, it was like, I, I can't believe they're making me see Andy Colbert in a different light. I hated right. it too. Couldn't believe it. I mean, I hated this guy. He and Cratch too. But um, yeah. real quick, the speaking you know, of Colburn, um, and go on, I know you don't, you don't know everything. I want to mention too much about Zellners and stuff like that. But what do you think about? her current motions of, you know, somebody seeing Bobby in the RAV4. That's her current filing, I believe, back in January, I believe it was. Hmm. Um, um, I mean, I don't Burrish? know. Much... I'm sorry? I think is the Burrish is the one. The only thing I think I think is kind of odd is this, this Burrish now remembers that he passed Bobby and saw Bobby in a car how many years later, right? Yeah. Right. Um, the problem, I think, and this wasn't me that found this, but there were people online that showed came up with this and found this, but they hunted his past and found where he was at rallies for Steven. Um, uh, he, had, he commented in support groups about Steven. So now you remember this, even though. Right. That's what I was going to say. Dang, man. It could be something. I mean, obviously it's yeah. just speculation, but, uh, you know, somebody just wanted to get wrapped up in the case. I don't know. I mean, they, they want to help and they, they do think, oh, hey, maybe I, I mean, maybe he remembers it. I don't know. It just seemed a little weird to me, but oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, I agree totally. Yeah, that does make it a little, yeah, a little skeptical, make me a little skeptical. Oh, you were about to mention the other one. Right? Was a, yes. Okay. Go, yeah. go for it. So that 
there's an original email from Sawinski that he sent in 2016 to um, you know the Innocence Project or their attorney at the time. I, I don't remember who it was. Or I don't even know if he remembers who it was, but it was somebody after watching Making a Murder. So he legitimately did reach out. The problem I have is what he put in that email is that he saw a guy, only one of them, he didn't know who it was. So, okay, I give him the benefit of the doubt that he didn't know who Bobby was, but now he does, right? He later came back and recognized mm -hmm. Bobby. Right, makes um, sense. But he didn't know who it was. And he never saw the passenger, the guy that was the other guy. He never saw him, only the one guy. And he doesn't know what date it was. It was between this date and this date. And then, mm. then his affidavit is very clear. And that again is I can't take credit for finding any of that, but I read a lot online. So and it's to be like, clear, how, this is the one where they saw the rav on the side of the road mailman no this is the mailman guy that's oh, oh okay guy. okay yeah okay. that's a cenix dude from november 4th and yeah that was like in mam2 definitely but this new guy sawinski and burrish that we just talked about sawinski right. originally said that he never saw the other guy and he didn't know what date it was right so that yeah that was i was gonna say about the earlier about the bus driver she that was a testimony too about brendan was oh but she didn't know the date or it could have been a month before i think we figured that out when it was oh okay um well, she, so to be clear she testified she saw a photographer yep that was about it but she didn't remember the dates right she thought it was the prior week which would have been when she would have seen teresa that would have made sense sure. oh, that right. always yeah, so that always bugged me. Like, I don't get it. But one day I happened to come across, I have metadata on Teresa's pictures. Right. So I could see every time she visited, what time she took those pictures at. And that was the only time that Teresa would have been on the property when the bus came was October 10th. Wow. Um, oh, gotcha. Or could have been, I should say. I think the last picture she took was around 320 at Avery's. And then I believe I'm speculating a little bit here, but the bus comes, I think, around 3 30, 3 30, 3 40. I think that sounds right from what she said. Yeah. yeah it sounds and right. she was at she was at Avery's. The last picture at Avery's was at 3 20. And the bus driver comes at 3 30. And the bus driver said she saw her taking a picture up front where the bus turns around well the bus right. turns around up in that circle it doesn't bring them to avery yeah they walk down the whole drive right. gravel driveway right right he saw she said she saw her taking pictures where the bus turns around not down where the van is where okay. the bus turns around and right. that's where they have their cars for sale they put them down there so that i i mean i truly believe that's what happened again i would bet my life on it but i mean the metadata kind of supports that that would have been the only other time that she would have been there close as close to when the bus driver was there all right makes sense to me um, all right i gotta ask a stupid question <laughs> how it's 2005 right yes yeah was the cloud around like how do you know what when the pictures were taken on the 31st oh in the camera sim or whatever. yeah camera holder. Yeah. but i thought the camera was burnt in a barrel oh no 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 her old that's a great that's not a dumb question at all no. that's a really good question she the camera was burnt but the card wasn't so okay she takes her picture she has to give that to them to auto trader so all of her other her card what do you call those those we'll we'll memory little. cards right yeah. So she, they already had them inputted in their computer and it would have had the metadata from her card from the camera. So her camera was burned, but the card that had the pictures from her prior appointments yeah, was already right. uploaded in their computer. Okay. So they okay. were on, I think they gave the uh, police a disc of all of her pictures and they were able to, their computer guy was able to do that. Right. So obviously the current card that she would have been using, the yes. memory card would have been burnt, but the previous one with the bus okay. driver saw it. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We're from the tenth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I get that. I was I was thinking that um Brenda was saying that she could look at the metadata on the pictures she took 
of Barb's van on the oh, 31st. No. Yeah. no, no, my apologies. No, what not oh. from that day, not from that day. Her okay. pri- all her prior ones. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I thought we were about to we There's something. no pictures of the van anywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. That all would right. change a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it would. <laughs> Um, I just had a couple more things. Um, just educate us a little bit on the, there seems to be some controversy with the scent dogs and the cadaver dogs. Right. Um, you know, first of all, there are two different things, but the pathing seems odd and people are yelling back and forth about what they hit on and what they didn't. It seems to be clear mm-hmm. that from ma'am that they hit on his back steps and they tried to go around the burn area, but there was his dog, which we both said, to be honest, again, we're, it didn't make sense why they don't take that dog out of there sooner. Yeah, um, they just keep avoiding the area, but it seemed to want to. So, clarify that if you don't mind. We probably have that all mixed up. Oh no, you're you sound pretty much right on. Um, but the confusion is is in the bio, or I guess of you know marketing for Daily Wire, right. they put cadaver dog. Okay. Instead of bloodhound. Okay. So that's all what right. they're all up in arms at. Oh, Luke was a bloodhound. They don't even know what kind of dog it is. That was in, in right. the marketing. That wasn't in the film. We didn't call it. We don't. The <laughs> right. I mean, it's her. clear. She's explaining. The handler of Luke is explaining this. Yes. Right. Right. But the bio was wrong or the trailer, whatever, the teaser, somebody said it wrong or it was written wrong. And that's, you know, the big deal. We're trying to hide something apparently by that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Gosh. I know it's very frustrating. But anyway, so. The keep in mind they're in the country, they burn everything, they burn their garbage, they yeah. have leftovers, they're, they're gone bad, they burn them. There's chicken mm. bone, right? Yeah. Four barrels, you know, they burn stuff. So, when they didn't, you know, they're looking for a body, they're that's what they were looking for. They're trying to find her remains. They had 40 acres to search cars that they opened up, they actually went in the trunks, they popped the trunks, they like searched those cars three times. So when Sarah, first they had the cadaver dogs come in and those dogs, they didn't have life scent because obviously they don't think she's alive. Right. I'm not going to send a life scent in there. Once I find a rav and the dogs are hitting on it, there's probably blood in there, right? There's something in there. It's a cadaver dog hitting on it. So I, the live dogs didn't actually come in on the first day. They had the cadaver dogs going and doing all their hits and alerts. So when Louv came in, they started her, and, and there's other tracks with Luf that are, you know, in other locations, but the one that's the most important was when they started at the van, or right, right by where the van is, and she went right to the van, and then she went to the garage, and people will say, well, why didn't they let her in the garage? Well, it's a scent dog. It's looking for a scent, and they know there's not a body in there because they've already searched the garage, so you're not going right. to put that dog in there because there's not a body or anything. They, they looked at it already, so the dog did want to go in the garage, so they kept going, tried to get an alarm to the burn pit. Bear was there, okay? Then it tried to go to the back door, or it alerted on the back door, which is, you know, to me, very telling. And then it tried again to get to the burn pit and then it went around and tried again, but it went all the way down, came back through, went up and down that berm that Sarah's talking about. That, mm-hmm. right. that was pretty powerful. It is. It really is. And, and it's, you know, they're, they're calling her like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't have experience. We have this other guy who knows more. Yeah, um, there's always another guy. It's, always, it's, always. I'm like, well, I got another guy to your guy. Yeah. We just keep going. Right. So, <laughs> I, I think she's very genuine. I mean, I, I really thought she was a very credible subject and she just explained what happened. She does have a lot of experience and what, and she knows her dog and what her dog was telling her. But in addition to that, a cadaver dog was doing the same thing. Right. So the, and another bloodhound was doing the same thing. So now it's okay. Well, they could be picking her scent up because Teresa had been there before and she could have, you know, maybe, uh, you know, she was there with her book or something. And it, and then another person just said today, I read that, well, if Brendan Dassey was standing by the fire, shouldn't he have her, her smell on him? All right. Um, right. So 
Well, yeah, if you had the cadet, if you had the dog in there that same day, maybe it would have. I don't know. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know the answers, but instead it just feels like instead of trying to look into is that possible with an open mind, it's like, well, shouldn't Brendan have had some ashes on him or something if he was downwind of it? Right, it, right. And the wind didn't just blow on October 31st. They're looking at these wind directions because we did yeah. too. I looked at the wind directions when Fabian said Earl had to go forward because the smoke was right. blowing in his face. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. You know, you look at that and you're like, oh, this doesn't really line up. But does that mean he's lying or does that mean it's because maybe um, he was in a little different place and the wind shifted? Mm -hmm. I mean, the wind doesn't just steadily blow that way no. all the time. And then Sarah said a couple of things. Again, we didn't have everything in there, but she had said when it's moist and when it rains. And there had been rain. Rain will bring that up. Rain, yeah, moisture. That's what we were actually saying about the yeah. call. We had never saw the photos when it had been raining out there and it was wet and you could clearly see. Right? Mm -hmm. right. So that's to me maybe why the scent was still there. Because I thought scent, I thought rain would wash it away. I was just thinking it would wash it away, but it wouldn't. It would lift it. So I thought that was interesting. And it really seemed very credible to me when she said, if you just put bones in the fire pit, you're not having that burning action. They're just there. Right. So to me, that was like one of our biggest bombshells. So are you comfortable answering a question? Um, if it doesn't support, mm -hmm. if your answer may like, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. support. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tire, the belting of the tire that has the bone yeah. fragments in it. Yes. The Okay. Like I said earlier, that was a pretty powerful image. Right. All right. We know they, according to the trial, I think they, there were no photographs taken of the bones in the pit, right? But, On the 8th, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So when was that photo taken? That, the 10th. Two days later? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So All the 8th, right. on the 8th, later in the day, about 3 o'clock, I think. Um, yeah, 3 o'clock, he said he started sifting after they got the dog out of there. And, you know, they didn't, they did have somebody come in and take the dog away. And, you know, the dog handlers were like, why didn't the dog handlers do it? Well, they probably could have. But at that point, are they really thinking that they have you know are they really thinking that those are teresa they're just not connecting that they're still doing other things and all these different teams are doing things um so i i don't know with the things that were in the fire pit and why they didn't i just want to answer that quick on why they didn't get rid of the dog sooner i wish they would have but i don't think they were expecting that that's where they were going to find her so i just want right, to right. you know answer that i one. think people forget that these you know investigators cops everybody they're they're all human they all mm -hmm. make mistakes and they're not you know they don't know what in the moment they don't know what they're looking for right you don't know what you don't know at exactly that point. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead <laughs> yeah no no exactly you're exactly right so after this happened they got rid of the dog the dog went wherever i think it went actually went up to the office until they could get somebody but they got the dog out of there and then somebody came and got him a family member i, I can't remember offhand but they called in the, the crime lab, all right? They called in this Ertl guy, this Ertl. He came in, and we don't really know what he meant by that it had been altered. Like, I don't know. I've asked a crime lab person. I've asked Tom, what does it mean to say it's altered? And I don't know if Ertl thought, well, it's altered because it's not skeletal remains. So if you burn a body, you're not going to have crumbles and bones and ashes. You're going to have a skeleton. Right? right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's what he meant by altered because Stephen was using a shovel and maybe moving her out or doing whatnot. I'm not sure. But regardless, that's his reasoning why he didn't take pictures. But when I really thought about what he would have taken pictures of, it would have literally been a pile of like a burn pile of stuff right. all together in a little dugout area in this certain section of this dugout area. So what his thought process was on this, along with the DCI guy who had some experience also with arson, but we're not arson investigators, neither of them, mm -hmm. was let's take these bones and put them in a box because we still have a lot of people searching, right? They're still out there looking for days. We still haven't found anything. Let's get these sent off now anything we possibly can in the next two hours before right. it gets dark 
just from this pile and send those off. And then once we know if it's anything, we'll come back and finish it. So although they saw the, the tire wires with the bones in it and they knew they were there, I think the guy knew enough to know that if he tried to pull it apart without any experience doing that, that those are mm -hmm. going to crumble. Right. So he, they put them, put a tarp over everything, sent them off on the, on the 8th. On the 9th, they had um, a retired guy come in because Leslie, Dr. Eisenberg, was not available. He came in, he identified it as a 35-year-old, roughly 35-year-old female, you know, whatever the age range was. And then they knew. So they called their arson guy, Rodney Pabato. He came on the 9th. The weather was bad. They said, let's do other stuff. We'll do it tomorrow. So on the 10th, the first thing they did was start taking pictures. And then they gridded. And they did a full processing of the whole area. Right. And what you see on making a murder, what I thought was really misleading was they had one of the def um, the defense experts talking about how they gridded and how unprofessional it was and how yeah. they did such a crappy job. And at the same time, he's talking about a shovel. They're showing the shovel that was at the fire pit with the pointed end. Mm -hmm. right. And that was Stephen's shovel. So they're, they used flat shovels. They used flat nose shovels. But when... That guy's talking about how unprofessional it was, and they use these shovels. They're showing the shovel Stephen had. Stephen had, right. Right. <laughs> so all these like little slights of hand that I notice that get me angry every time I talk about it. <laughs> but, right. um, so then he did the full gritting, and that's when they found uh, a lot. I shouldn't say a lot, but that's when they went and they did everything around the area. But he also went back and looked at that tarp that they had collected from the two days prior because now you have an arson investigator who's going to go through that little by little. And that's when they actually found her um, tissue, when they actually found the bone with her tissue on it. Right. And, uh, you know, one thing, there's a lot of little you know, weird things that happen. And one thing I know for sure is my mom passed away uh, oh. at a young age. Okay. Uh, she was 52. And, um, because she passed away at home at a young age, you know, they had to do an autopsy on her, but the medical examiner in our County was on vacation. So she had to be shipped to Mecklenburg County where she, you know, Charlotte. And, uh, so I do know that sometimes things like that happen yeah. and this happened to be, you know, a murder this time. So it's really important to get everything just right. But, right. I know that when things like that happen in a murder, people are like, see, you know, that she should have been, this person should have been there. That person, people have to take vacations or they're sick or things happen sometimes. Yeah. That was a big thing with the corner, right? That was a big, thing yeah. That's, murder. Yeah. I mean, I mean, she was not allowed and she wasn't cold and yes. it's, it's and a big it's conspiracy. So what, but she wasn't needed. Is that how we're oh, yeah. this crap's basically saying, what is she going to identify? Right. Is that right. And, and he's right. I mean, again, I'm, I'm going off of what they've told me. I'm not proclaiming to be an expert on all these things. It's just what I read and researched and talked to. But um, the main reason they didn't want her there is because the difference, um, back up a little bit. When everybody talks about Manitowoc's role and who could and couldn't be on the property, Right. The one thing I've not heard anyone officially say anywhere that separates who was allowed and who wasn't elected officials. So Colburn, Link, deputies, they were not elected officials. Everybody above that recused themselves. So right. the coroner would have been one of those people. So, you know, corporate counsel and the sheriff, that's why they had the other sheriff do it. Um, the district attorney, all of those people were elected officials. And that's when that's who recused themselves and said, Calumet, can you take this and lead this and prosecute? Ah, see, I okay. didn't, I mean, I knew she was, but yeah, I didn't think about that being the, the kind of cutoff. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't clear. And I wish we would have been more clear, but in a nutshell, she was an elected official. And had they used her, they'd be screaming the other way. Oh, you oh, let yeah. her on. And what does she know? So yes. you can't win. But right. um, the defense did attempt to call her as a witness. And when the state received the witness list for the defense, the state actually said, well, what's going on? You know, what's that? So they went and talked to her and she had no idea. 
she she didn't know why she was being called to testify for the defense at all. Hmm. Wait, what? what? <laughs> yes. It's, it's in documents. So she literally didn't know. They went because they got their list of who was on. The, right. the defense was going to call. Right. And uh, basically the, they reached out to her and she said, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know. She didn't know. But in the documentary, she's tore up about it. Right. But in 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 the defense of that, she did actually testify, but they wouldn't let them use it. But it certainly didn't seem quite as, you know, intentional or malicious. Let's keep her out. We right, right. Her here. We're going to arrest you. I don't know about any of that. I don't know what's true with that because nothing really came up about that. All I know is that she was an elected official and they told her, you will not go there. You will right. not go there because it's you're an elected official for one thing. And another thing, what are you going to do? You don't know that it's right. true. You, who are you going to pronounce dead? I mean, an animal. It, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, I didn't think about because they, you know, that was a big thing is that's the first thing here. These people were not allowed, you know, right. um, Manitowoc County was not allowed, but that was just a DA decision right. to cover their asses in a sense and to avoid the conflict of interest look, I guess. But still, the, the deputies who were trained evidence collectors had to have a Calumet County officer with them. Right. But anybody elected, no. No, they they literally said nobody elected. Sheriff, right. okay. coroner, corporate counsel, attorney, um, district attorney, anybody who's elected that level, no. Got kind it. of the decision makers, I would think, right? The top decision makers were the ones. Yes. Yeah. You know, so that's hmm. that. That kind of has a little adds a little clarity to that. I mean, because that was such a big deal, you know. It does. It seemed there seemed to be. And well, you know, that the coroner specifically, you know, you're yeah. right. She, unless they altered it, she did spin it in a way that like, she did, she didn't say, she didn't bring any of that up. She was like, no, I wanted to be there and I was told right. not, not to be. So she didn't, she and they could have, she could have <laughs> literally said, but they cut it off at elected officials yeah. and making a murderer just left that sentence off you know yeah yeah um, i don't so, i don't know so who knows yeah i don't know i mean i don't i i don't know but that's all i have heard about it and what i knew from the elected officials piece was well right. she shouldn't be there for one thing because she's an elected official and they would complain if she would have been allowed you yeah, can't wait i do agree with that yeah, exactly. yeah you're right. right it doesn't matter right way. but the elected on, on one hand we gotta you got she's gotta be out there she could arrest the sheriff but on the other hand <laughs> they're not allowed i mean what do you Mm -hmm. Pick right. one. <laughs> and then do you call another corner and okay so what are they gonna they can't right do? i mean that's what it boils down to right right, right. identify it. uh I've, I've told you this story before and maybe on a, one of our live streams but uh a friend of mine's dad owned a trailer park when we were young <laughs> and he um you know people would come pay his rent through the bedroom window so his wallet he'd walk around with a wallet full of cash a lot of times well, one day his, his wallet came up missing and uh, they called the cops out there, made a report. Well, then the wallet, they find the wallet, but it's empty of cash. Mm -hmm. So he calls the cops again and he says, I want you to come out here and fingerprint this wallet. And they said, sir, we can't fingerprint a wallet. He said, bullshit. I watched you. I watched them fingerprint a lava rock on Hawaii Five-0. <laughs> And he was dead serious. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of it, though. Yeah. The, the, we, watch CSI and think they're right. Yeah. They're experts. Yeah. 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 yeah we're all um, amateur sleuths and amateur yes. lawyers. And, and, and Brenda, you're not the expert who's actually involved in the case with all the files. It's the people on Twitter who read the files. Yeah. Right. They, so they've odd. read the files. They know it all. It's so odd to me. Yeah. I mean, and they have, you know, they have this, um, this group of people, like I couldn't compete with that because they have 20 people reading stuff, right, but right. you know, you got to focus, you got to pick the right things to focus on and then research the hell out of it. So I don't have all the answers. Obviously I don't have all the right answers, but I, I'm doing it with the best of intentions, I guess is the best way I can put it. Right. You know, it's like, never went um, into this to be famous. That's for sure. The only thing I had left, and you know, unless James had yep. more stuff, but um, you know, well, two things, I guess. Um, 
first, is there anything else that we're trying to just kind of hit on some of the big things as far as evidence goes? Sure. You know, that you could possibly explain or clarify that maybe, um, you know, like, for, you know, obviously the big thing, there's no evidence in the trailer. Uh, right. Maybe other than the bloodhound hitting at the back door, but um, there's a theory there's a tarp possibly because they did find, find grommets in the fire. Oh, sure. Yep. Um, but do you can, or if you want to, do you have like a personal kind of at least idea based off all the research you've done, all the documentation you have of what happened? Like a general that's a great thing question. To believe personally, or if you don't want to talk about that, yeah, if you no, rather no, not. I will. Um, I, I feel like you know, one of the things that we didn't put in another thing, you know, that you just can't fit in, it doesn't fit with the storyline, and you'd have to shift too much to do it, but. One of the things I always asked myself was, did Avery plan this? Yes. Was this planned? And if it um, was, why? And you do pick that up a little bit in convicting where we kind of go with that by how Avery, you know, talks about his 18 years. Uh, you know, I don't got to listen to nobody anymore. And, and there's right. a lot more statements from other parties that talk about all bitches owe him. And women are, you know, he, it's, it's, more misogynistic than we probably portrayed but right i guess i feel like with what i've researched i feel like he probably did have it planned and i probably do think that he chose teresa because obviously that he ramped up his appointments and everything after jody right. went to jail and that and was the phone calls the star 67 right yeah. right okay. Uh, and things like that. So I do feel like it was too well planned for it to be. And people in my own office would disagree with that. Right. I feel like it was too well planned to be just, you know, I tried to get her to go out with me and she said no. So I wanted her and I raped her and I killed her. I just feel right. like it was too well planned or there would have been even more evidence because there was a lot of evidence if you really look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. but the one thing that stood out to me was the day before him and Jody were on the phone for four times and they were in this big fight over something stupid right. and i remember i don't know how it came up but it something came up about the scanner a scanner and now of course they have a tow truck they're going to have scanners but the scanner um he was talking about was a mobile scanner and he he didn't really go do that he wasn't the, the tow truck driver earl was and earl yeah. is still mm -hmm. so um that sunday before he was talking to Jody and he was looking for an antenna for his what for his mobile scanner. And Jody said, Well, what do you, you know, you we don't it's in the garage or something. And I just remember thinking, Oh, that's weird. And then the next night, the very first time you hear that scanner in these phone calls was Halloween night. Right. So you can hear it chirping. You can actually hear it in our phone, one of our phone calls. I'll be doing. Right, because so because the story was he was in the bed watching porn. Right, right. And then right. on the phone with Jody, he's out cleaning the yard, and yeah, and he's go, and he's spitting, right. and you can hear the scanner, the mobile scanner. So I look at all these like little things that other would people would say you're nuts. It's speculation. Yeah, it's total speculation. Right, right. But if, it's what I feel based off of all these little things. So it's just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. Sure. But those things I pick up on and make notes of and kind of really listen to. So whether Brent, whatever Brendan's role was or wasn't, I, mean, I do feel like Stephen chose her and she was like this proxy for all of the years he wrongly spent in prison. Right. And that yeah. was, he got her back. I mean, she dissed him, in my opinion, when he said, hey, do you want to, I got this towel on, you want to you know, come and be my girlfriend, whatever it was, you're going to be on that wall someday, whatever it was he said to her on October 10th, based off of, you know, right, the witness right. statements. She, I think she probably just did something like, oh, he, you know, probably giggled. Right. Mm -hmm. right, right. But I, I, you know, yeah, that was, a, that was kind of what we were talking about that, you know, with the Zellner stuff and all the investigations there, it's like, he could have been the one to follow her, you know? Right. Know, so Yeah. We have thought that, like, that her like, reenactment was accurate, but he was, might've been the one driving that followed her. Well, um, the thing about the reenactment is if anybody was following her, you guys, you know, I know the area, right? right, right. You're going to go from the salvage yard to Cuss Road, which is way back around here. And to get there, you got to go down this road, 
and then turn here. And this is like right where the reenactment was, like right, you know, halfway to Cuss Road. Right. She's not going to know where Cuss Road is. She doesn't have a clue where that is. She lives an hour away. Right. So you're going to say, oh, let's go down by the cul-de-sac so you can take a picture of my car. And then Bobby, instead of he gets out of his car to tell her, let's go to the cul-de-sac instead of her saying, well, I'll just do it right here. Right. Why the hell would she go to the cul-de-sac with him? You know, however far away it is, not knowing where it is. Park at the end of the cul-de-sac, and one thing that people don't realize is where he supposedly killed her in broad daylight. There's a neighbor that literally is right there, and I know that because I got picked up for trespassing right there. I'll be darned. <laughs> yes, I, I snuck in, and I'm glad this came up because truth is, I'm like, oh, I bet you don't put that in convicting a murderer. Yeah, we didn't because it didn't fit, but I hoped it did come up. <laughs> yes, I wanted to settle an argument. So I snuck to deer camp because they were saying the dog hit on, on the deer yeah, camp. Yeah, I was going to bring yeah. that up. Yep. Yes, and it was a big argument. So I went, I snuck to the deer camp with Josh Redont, and the neighbor caught me. He went and got Josh Redont. They blocked me in, knowing now in hindsight, you can't do that. They blocked me in and called the police. Wow. That's <laughs> all because I wanted to know what color the trailer was because we we're arguing about it online. And the truthers were saying, oh, it's it's the deer camp road that Loof hit on. It, it's the deer camp trailer that Loof hit on the back door. Right. And I'm like, no, it was Avery's. It was Avery's trailer. It was Avery's. I'm gonna go find out if that and sure enough, that trailer wasn't there anymore. But that trailer wasn't red. It was like a rust with these spots, like camouflage colors on it. Okay. Right. So I'm like, hey, I got a trespassing ticket, but I did learn that <laughs> the deer camp trailer was not where Luke hit. So. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I like your cool style, though. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's like. I respect your effort you're putting into it. <laughs> the like cops did come, though, and I did get a ticket because he's like, didn't you see the signs? I'm like, oh, yeah, they're all over. No trespassing. <laughs> I just thought I was going to do that to get an answer. But, wow. but anyway, my point is, is that the guy literally saw me yeah. in broad daylight sneaking. Right. And I can't even imagine, number one, how Scott would get there. How the hell did Scott get there in that time? It wasn't, you know, they weren't even close to each other. They, you know, he, Barb was still married to the other guy, Tom Yanda. Right. And they there were newer relationships, so I don't think Bobby had this big relationship with Scott that Scott would somehow know to be there. Yeah, he, but, said, okay. in his, he said in his testimony I li or listened to the other day that was years later for whatever yeah. reason uh, that he didn't have he had no relationship with Scott for a, a long time. Oh no, and and, dad had just moved out fairly recently. Right, yeah. right. He didn't, they didn't. I, I think Scott even said he didn't even know which one of the boys one of the boys he didn't know which one it was even at some point so yeah. i i don't think that but i also even if they did know each other how did he get there so quick like, right. and, and why you kill her to frame avery but I, I i don't know that that story is just really hard for me to follow and maybe i'm missing something but i just i can't see a 19 year old chasing down a 25 year old woman just to kill her to frame my uncle yeah, and, right. and especially when you brought it up earlier, when you take out the computer stuff and all these horrible right. searches that were, you know, that Stephen clearly knew about. Right. It well, kind of takes the heat off of Bobby. To play, to play devil's advocate. Yeah, please. Yes. I'm not saying, I, I wouldn't say you killed her to frame your uncle. I would say you killed her out of your own perversion and then thought he's the easy scapegoat Target. yeah right so he tried to dispose of her basically but then thought oh uh, you know in the meantime i'm gonna maybe take advantage of this um i mean it's certainly likely but did did, did he supposedly rape her i mean what would be his purpose for killing her just to see no no I, that's my guess i, I should have okay. yeah i should have said I that i i mean it would based on the the computer stuff um, oh right that in, would in, make in my mind yeah he yeah. he's got like these sick fantasies or whatever yeah uh, yeah. that, you know, maybe, maybe he does. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people who have sick fantasies. They just don't act on them, you know? Oh, right. Um, yeah. So, um, do you think there's significance to the fact that it was Halloween? No. Okay. Cause I, I heard them asking 
Brendan that in one of the interrogations. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I think that was more of a no. I, I personally don't think it had anything to do with it. Yeah. If it did, I mean, I I couldn't say it doesn't, but I don't I don't think it was planned for it to be that day for it to be satanic or anything. Got you. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say one other thing. Oh, the other thing I think that kind of cinched it for me too was the bones in the quarry. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of how that whole process came about, and that was a tough one to figure out how to put in the film because we didn't want to go into a lot of the season two, and. But yet we couldn't just leave it at what they said at trial because it was such good information that actually supported the state's case, in my opinion, because the the theme of it is, okay, there's these human bones in the quarry and dang, somebody should have figured that out, right? I mean, the defense or the state should have figured out that there were bones in the quarry. But at that, when they got the second report from, of the bones, they had already prepared for trial because trial was supposed to be months earlier okay. so they were they were basing their um theory on what we said that there were bones in the fire pit there were bones in the burn barrel and there were some potential human bones in the court mm -hmm. right. so the defense that's good for them right that's that's mm -hmm. good if there's more than one spot in the quarry that's not so good agreed it is yeah. Like, yeah yeah so um when when the state was putting their thing together and then it got pushed back, I don't think they ever went back and even looked at Eisenberg's second report. The second report actually showed that there were bones, but it was by coordinates and you really couldn't tell that it was the quarry. So some awesome amateur sleuth figured it out. And that was how many years later. So we had to include that somehow. Right. And... I thought that was just something that would have really helped the state and somebody should have caught on to that back in the day because they could have used that to say, okay, Occam's razor, are you, is it more likely Stephen burned her, killed her and burned in the fire pit and then moved her bones out, like Brendan said, uh -huh. or is it more likely that someone else killed her, took the burn barrel from next door, brought that and burned her body in the quarry and then spilled in two other spots? You know, that aren't even right. close to each other. You know, it makes more sense that Stephen was driving around on a golf cart with pails and dumping it. Mm -hmm. And one of the experts right. actually said, this looked like it was dumped. It wasn't like it was a burn area. It was dumped. Yeah. There was too much of it to be, oh, I tipped it over in three spots accidentally. Yeah. That was that cinched it for me, I think, a lot too, that that just, I couldn't buy the body thing, I guess. Right. But. And just. Real quick, is there is there anything else like you mentioned a couple of things earlier that you couldn't include for this yeah. time and it wouldn't fit? Yeah. Is there any other evidence that people want to know about that would yep. literally you know shine some light on some of this doubt? I guess you. I think, I think there's one other thing I would like to share, and you know, guys, keep in mind too. Again, this is me thinking about this for years and years and talking. Mm -hmm. to people. Yes. So I please know that this is not in any way an expert opinion. Um, but just a lot of thought around it. And one of the things I picked up, remember how they say Teresa's key that they found was a spare key? Where were the rest of her keys? Right? Yeah, where's the house keys, right? Yeah. Yeah, and right. she definitely did have more than that for keys. We know that. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking, well, where are the rest of those keys? Did, I don't know if they melt. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. But one thing Steven said that I caught that made me go, oh my God, this is exactly what I would do if I was her was he said when Teresa comes she leaves her car running so she leaves her car running now I'm not thinking like salvage yard out of habit let's say you're someone taking pictures you're in in, in a place a parking lot right. I'm gonna lock my car and I'm gonna keep it running and I'm gonna take the spare key just to open it because she didn't have power locks or she, or I, I like that power. What do you call it? Um, she didn't have remote. Key yeah, remote right. She didn't yeah. have that. She had power locks, but she did not have keyless entry. She needed a key, so she took her key, her spare key, left her car running, locked her door with her person, kept her person there, and then went and took her pictures. It always only took a couple minutes, and then she right. left. 
So that was my best conclusion on what I could come up with when he said that. Well, why would why would he say that? Yeah. First of all, why would he even bring that weird thing up? But he did. He said it to Anjanette Levy on a phone call. So I mean, it's all little things like that that I'm. You know, people are going to laugh. I at like that. Oh, no, wow. that's a, that's what that's what adds. I up. imagine it's Halloween up there is pretty about. pretty chilly. What's that? Right. So she'd leave her heat on, I guess, her car oh, yeah, running yeah. for yeah. heat on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, or air conditioning in the summer, you know. I know yeah. I did when we worked. Before yeah. We worked. <laughs> yeah, my my car. That makes sense. I, you shut your car off back then. It seemed like you were wasting gas almost. I don't know. Right. And I was always told, start and stop your car. It takes too much gas. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, think we hear that too. Yeah, same thing. And now <laughs> they all cut off by themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Now it's like what you're what it's supposed to be. It shuts off at every stop sign. Exactly. So, but anyway, that's the only other one I can think of, you guys. But no, I like that. No, I mean, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's the little things right there that matter, though. Uh, like I said, it, everybody has opinions on things, and it's just little things that I think could be, could be. Well, uh, I don't know, James. You got anything else? So, uh, what, what real, what can we expect in episode ten? We next week, oh. Thursday. We, I mean, no, I know you can't yeah. spoil anything, but no, no. Is it just I... like a, putting a nice bow on everything, or we got some, we got a bombshell? We got... Yeah, you'll leave us with a cliffhanger. Yeah, a cliffhanger for people. Um, I think you'll be feeling every emotion possible. Okay, cool. I'll leave yeah. it at that. It's Fair honestly enough. one of our proudest episodes. It's one I'm probably the most proud of. Oh, okay. I love so it. That, so yeah. maybe there's a reason there wasn't a screener for. That's what I think. Yep. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. But yeah, I mean, it's I, it is one that I'm. It, it's closure, right? I'm hoping yeah, for a lot right. of people. But yeah, I think I think um, I think you guys will like it. Whether people agree with you or not, like you or not, they can't deny the hard work you put into this. No. You can tell it's a passion oh, project, yeah. and uh, yeah. it, it it shows. So Thanks good, good job, good Thanks job, you guys. It's, really? it's definitely a passion project and yeah, it's still happening. Apparently it's still going, but no, I, I appreciate being on here. I love talking about it as you know, and thanks for listening for a very long time. Yeah. We could talk about it for hours. We <laughs> could, we have, we, we could get, I mean, we just need a guest breakdown and go through the whole entire case file. Just be done. With it. <gasps> Just yeah. episode by episode. We yeah. need to get Chuck and Earl on here. Yeah, yeah I'll get Earl on there yeah. for you. No. <laughs> yeah, be that would be be really cool. But, yeah, uh, okay, he's a well, good guy. He um, really is a good guy. Yeah, I know you, you can tell earlier. You any any you said you're thinking about. It. I know you probably can't announce. You maybe do any any plans for another season, more episodes. Yeah, right now. Um, you know, if it was up to me, of course, I'd like to keep doing it forever, but it's unfortunately not. So we'll have to just see where, where it all pans out at the end of after 10 and we'll see Hopefully awesome. we'll see something more, but no, I, nothing I can speak about or would be able to answer on that right now, but hopefully something. All right. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's generating enough interest for something, you know, yeah. so, somebody's going to say, definitely going to continue this. Yeah, I hope so. I, mean, I think this one is going to generate interest for a while. This whole, this case, yeah. you know. Sure. Uh, I mean, because think about it. What if Stephen did 18 years the first time? Mm -hmm. It's been 18 years again, man. Right now. That's insane. I know. I know. Well, you'll definitely have, uh, you'll be able to look forward to the rebuttal, to our rebuttal. You'll be able to look yeah. forward to That's that right. going That's forward. Right. So yeah. it will it will continue on, I'm, I'm sure. Very, oh, I know you're licking your chops to see that. <laughs> I mean, because literally most of this is just like, here's what they said happened. Here's the other half of it. And you can see the records. I mean, literally. So, right. I don't, oh, I, uh, but, but I watch it. Hey, I'm, I'm open. I am. You should, and you should. You should. Everybody should form their own opinion and, right. and decide the credibility of the documents and the story itself. I mean, I'm one that says go to the documents, but I'm also not one that expects people to do that. So, if I can provide right. those documents, I do that. I try, I try to do that for people. Right. So, do I, you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you ever uh, speak to the Hallbecks? Hmm. I don't. Or communicate in any way or whatever? Okay. I, I don't. Um, I met them once and they know we're doing this and they didn't want to participate and we respect them. And quite honestly, I'm sure this is affecting them. Just the fact that this right. is coming up again. Again. Mm -hmm. But I hope for their... For them, that it goes out, you know, it ends with us. Yeah, in a way, 
I think they'll hear back some feedback and say, hey, they did you guys some justice, you know? I hope so. I, I really do because I think I always look at it like this when I think about what they went through, and you guys said that before a little bit too. But when I think about that, you're 20. I my daughter was 25 when I started this. Okay. Okay. So I'm everything I'm learning and thinking about, I'm thinking about her, right? Yep. So now I didn't just lose my daughter. Like my daughter didn't just die in a car accident. My daughter just was murdered. Mm -hmm. And I went through six weeks of trial for mm -hmm. Avery, two weeks of trial for Dassey. I went through motion upon motion hearing upon motion hearing before post conviction hearings on banks, everything and banks on banks. I don't know. And all of these things are happening. And they then come out with a TV show. Right. That makes my murderer, her murder, my daughter's murderer, a sympathetic character. Yeah. And makes our family the villains. Yes. Almost. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it isn't like they're just telling the story. They're making it that way. It's how I feel about it. Is they're right. making everyone else a villain and Avery not. And Candace has said that. So I'm kind of stealing her words, but yeah. they're making her family and everyone else besides Avery, the villain and Avery is the sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. So I can't even imagine. And then you got, you know, Stephen being this great guy and getting all this money and they actually received something. They didn't tell me this, but they got something in the mail for Teresa, basically saying, give this to Teresa. We know she's still alive. It was oh, that yeah. her birthday. Yeah. You know, little things like that. Just imagine what that family's gone through, and now they just. Uh, I told him the other night. I saw this these conspiracy <laughs> theories of she's still alive. She was into some horrible photography, and this this is the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. It's, it's pathetic. There's it's, always a bigger conspiracy. And, always, and it's just sad because I can't I, I can't yeah. think of any other family that has gone through what that family's gone through. Right, and if Coburn got all that hate mail voicemail then yeah. i bet her brother did too oh. uh, yeah know, and, and the boyfriend and you know because they found you know her um her day planner was still at home and, and i listened to that stuff the other day and right. turns that out that she yeah. she likely just left it there with but based off the time she was making phone calls and checking emails so right well and that's that is what they believe because she did print it out the night before and she did hand right. write on it and she did go home in between so that's what it's been kind of figured and actually truth are kind of figured out that where she was at a certain point when she yeah took i think I, I saw yeah. that video yeah that, yeah, so that, was, that yeah, a couple of days ago but um one other thing if you don't mind i'll share this real quick one no, thing about please. ryan is uh one of the exhibit shows like the scratches on his hands and yeah. the expert saying yeah here's Teresa's fingernails it certainly looks like those could have been defensive ones right. and the video that that was from i think was shown in maybe both making a murder. I don't know. But anyway, I found the video and I was watching it. And from the beginning of the video, there's nothing on his hand. Uh -huh. He was writing. Wow. And I actually went ahead a couple days and I found a close up of his hands. They were interviewing him and he was putting flags out again on November 7th right. and they zoomed in on the flags and his freaking hand with the writing was right there. I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> wow. And an Man. expert, an expert put an affidavit that said those were scratches. Man. That's, oh my God. That is dangerous. It that is. is. Dangerous. Exactly. So yeah, I feel for those people. I feel for the Ryan Hilgases of the world. Yeah. It's wrong. It's wrong. What's being done. It should not be allowed. But no. No. Yeah, I think because we always question that, like, why, you know, would the holdbacks be involved? Don't they want, you know, is there some doubt there that it's him? You know, wouldn't they want the actual truth to be right? Real, That's what I kept this? thinking. Yep. But when you yeah. see what they've actually saw that we didn't see, right. I mean, it makes sense. And they saw a lot more than I have. I haven't seen all of it. I haven't seen everything. So, wow. I mean, they lived it. And yes. I remember early on, someone said to me, I said, you act like you know more than they do. Like you just started this case six weeks ago and you act like right. you know more. And he's like, I do because yeah. I don't have blinders on. Right. And I'm like, oh my God. With my daughter, I guarantee you, I wouldn't have blinders on. I'd be questioning every single thing. So don't, don't. Right. Like, 
Yeah. You can't, you can't put yourself in that situation. No. no. Mm-mm. I always think they're off limits. So when you go after that, I, uh, it's yeah. just wrong. It's just yeah. wrong. It yeah. is. Anyway. Well, well, I guess uh, I think we're good. I mean, I think yeah. there'll, there'll still be some comments and questions, and maybe we'll have you back. Well, it'll be great, there'll, you guys. You can a, bring Sean back next time because apparently I'm not sure if I qualify as a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely you absolutely in. qualify. Hey, look, we're just, we're just a tiny little, we're just some rednecks that talk on microphones. That's it. That's oh, it's the best kind. What do you mean? That's the best kind. I oh, love down at roof people. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. But Brenda, thank you for, for coming on. I Can't thank you enough. It. You know, no, it was great, you guys. So we kept you a little bit on your Saturday night. So uh, thank you so much. We really no. appreciate it. And, uh, I, it was great. I had a blast, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to all my, my oh, theories. Oh, no, that's what we, we want. Oh, to, anytime have a conversation starter and let you go <laughs> that's right okay. hopefully sean's doing okay tell him we said hello and yeah. uh, we'll do I, keep I'm doing what you're doing see. yeah definitely keep in touch and uh, we'll get out of here and let it okay. sounds great guys bad. all right see ya